Have you got through yet, Betty? Oh, have I? Oh, Jim, I'm only getting the end gate. Oh, blimey, I don't know why folks have telephones. There's probably some idiot fighting with it. Yeah, well, knowing the places that Beck goes to, I'm not a bit surprised. Oh, it's useless. How long is it since Mr Gilroy <sighs> rang? Oh, ten minutes. He can't get from the airport in half an hour. I warned Beck mucking him out with that Paul Rigby. I warned her she was playing with fire. I'll get back. Oh. Any news, Betty? Yeah, I'm not a dicky bird. Well, you better get your finger out. We haven't got all night, love. All right, clever clogs. Come on, you have a go. It's all your fault. If you'd have been half a man, we'd have got shut up, Paul Rigby. I shall put that down to panic. Have you tried the wine bar down the precinct? Where do you think I've been trying for these last ten minutes? Go on, get your running pumps off and get off down there. Now, it's only a cock stride. It's raining, Betty. Oh, you're not going to get washed away, are you? Look, here's my umbrella and no daughter. If you see Bet, tell her to get back here sharp. It's a good one, you daffy. Oh. Oh. I've been home some while, Mavis. Oh, one of the paper lads didn't turn up, so Rita and myself had to do his round after we closed. Naturally. Well, I'm sorry, but you were late. Anyway, I've got all the tea ready, cos I thought you'd have some news. Oh, actually, it got quite tense waiting, so when well, Rita... I can appreciate that. Certainly had my share of waiting today. And then I wondered whether you'd gone for a drink with DP. I thought... They'll have straightened things out and gone for, what does DP call it, a jar? <laughs> <laughs> Some hopes. Oh, Derek. You didn't have a row. Look, I, I know how you feel about being demoted to dispatch, but, well, there are medical reasons. But I didn't even get to see him, Mavis. Oh. There's always tomorrow. Tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. <laughs> Hamlet. Are you sure it's not Macbeth? It's Hamlet. I might not be up to much, but I do know my Shakespeare. Right. All right, Derek. There's no need to snap. I mean, if you haven't seen DP today, surely you can see him tomorrow. He'll be in Amsterdam. Well, you've got his home number. Look, why don't you phone him tonight and fix something up? Hmm? If you don't want an audience, I can always go around to Emily's for half an hour. It won't be any use. Now, you mustn't say that. I mean, you were so positive this morning. You're just letting anxiety take over again, and that's not good for your nerves. My nerves are perfectly sound, if you don't mind. <sighs> Look, Derek, once you've got in touch with DP, you'll, you'll know how you stand, and then... Well, if you have to stay in dispatch... Is that so bad? Dispatch is not bad at all. On reflection, I could be very happy in dispatch. Oh, where's Jack the Slowcoat? Do you know, I would put it past him to starve off and leave us taking the music. What music? We've done now. Look, if Bet and Alex start with a direct line of fire, I've seen it, love. It's either where you tin at or learn how to duck. Come on, any chance of any service over here? Or what? I'm sorry, it's panic stations round here. Refills, is it? Best bitter. Yeah. Why, uh, what's up? Landlady's on town. Landlord's due back in about five minutes, three weeks before his time. Well, I never. Caught bit on the up, has he? Nice one, Alec. You see, you're a regular, aren't you? So you must know him. Now, I can't see what all flaps about. I mean, they're both ancient, aren't they? Bastard. You're married, aren't you? Oh, afraid so, love. Hey, 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 I'll get these. It's my round. Listen, you keep your money in your pocket, you. Pay your rent. Your rent? I'll have to do a bank to pay me rent. <laughs> but I can still stand my corner. Yeah, love. Cheers, love. Thanks. Oh, cheers, Kayla. There you go. Oh, just, well, oh, make sure thing, done it. Oh, that curly wax. He owes me 80 quid in rent, he does. Look at him. Buying drinks, flashing his fivers about. One fiver, I Ah, but anyway, it makes you think. I've been the soul of patience, you know. I've got my bills to meet. Steady on. Think of the blood pressure. And how many skint road is going on. Even another. I thought you were just passing through. No, I'm, I'm meeting Audrey later on at Yale's. Oh. I've got plenty of time. Anyway, I'm only on the low alcohol. Uh, Rose return. Oh, yes, Jack. Any news, lovey? No luck. Oh, no, he's not arrived back here yet, thank goodness. <laughs> Do a tour of the clubs? I should definitely think you'll get back here pronto, mate. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello, Betty Love. <laughs> How's the hot pot trade? 
Where have you sprung from? Off the back of a camel, where do you think? <laughs> I've just come in the back way because I didn't want that lot in there to know I'm back. Not until oh. I've seen Bet. <laughs> is, uh, is she, uh, she in the bar? Uh, no. No? No. Oh, don't tell me. <laughs> Upstairs, tarting herself up. <laughs> Bath full of asses milk, clutching her ass. Well, no, I, you see, I don't know. I... Uh, Bet! Oh. Bet, I'm back, love. Your little fat sheik is home. <laughs> Hot foot from the desert sands and the burning heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's deaf to the world. She's probably got her heroes full of bath foam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's probably because you, you're back a bit previous, you oh, know. Oh, yes, well, that was Wally Simpson's fault, the clown. He got all the dates wrong, you oh. know. Dates, mind you. I call them dates. The only good dates I saw out there were in boxes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Betty, Betty. Oh. Look at this, eh? Oh! Uh, how do you reckon that'll grab her ladyship? Oh. Eh? Mind you, it cost me an arm and a leg, you know, did that bargaining. Yeah. Mind you, uh, I'm very good, you know. Bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look at this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what about this? <clears throat> Essence of the Nile. Mm. Supposed to be an aphrodisiac, you know. Mm. <laughs> well, the hell is she? Do us a favour, nip up and give her a knock. I'll just open a, a bottle of bubbly <laughs> and... Uh, if any belly dancers ring me from Cairo, tell them I'm stopping in my tent tonight. <laughs> I've got an headache. <laughs> Have you turned to a pillar of salt or what? Look, Bet's not in the bath. She's out. She's gone to the pictures. She went just before you rang from the airport. Oh, trust her. Yeah, well, I mean, she, she went on her own, love. I mean, she gets that browned off, you see. Oh, does she? She wants a dose of what I've had. Heat, flies, and the food, you know, it goes right through you. Oh, well, it must be a bit of a letdown, we bet not being here. <sighs> well, that's an understatement. <laughs> Still, could be worse. She could be out on the town with Stella Rigby. Oh, no, she's not, no. She's <laughs> fell out with Stella, you know, over Charlie Bracewell. Well, I think. Anyway, it's nice to have you back. Thank you, Betty. <laughs> that's very good. I'll just... I'm wanted in the bar. Aye, all right, love, then. She's <sighs> back, Betty. <sighs> no sign of a madam. What's the plan? Well, I've told him that she's at the pictures, but if we can cop her before he does, we might be all right, Doc. Come on. Ah, Ooh. Jack. <laughs> Are you still working here? Yeah. I rather hope you'd won the pools or got a life sentence or something. <laughs> You've been rained on. Or is that cistern overflowing again? Uh, I just had to pop out, boss. Pop out, eh? Uh, I'll bet you've had a field day, haven't you, eh? These past few weeks. <laughs> well, the days of wine and roses are over, Jack. I bet there's been more going on in this house. Welcome back home, boss Sam's for the love of all of boss. He's been five minutes he's having a flaming go. Well, I could shake him. Oh, I? don't you dare. Hello. Bye, Gummy. Drawing is this little terror. And he's a little rough neck and all, aren't you? What are you? Yeah, well, Mike Tyson worried you, Will. Oh, <laughs> knock him out. Oh, you fancy your chances then, do you? We'll have to get you in a boxing club and stop you throwing your weight around at school. You work, don't you? Well, oh, Grandpa Alf is never out of that <laughs> shop. I should think he knows Alf has a shop. He's in it often enough. My dad is the garage. Right, Mr Tough Guy. I'll let you stay up to see your gramps. Time to go to bed. I'm going to work with my dad. Yes, of course you are. Come on, I'll get him off to sleep. Up that wooden hill, young lad. Say good night. Night. That's it. Upsetting. I've tried to tell him. I've tried to find the words. The idea of death in a child's mind, well, it just doesn't seem to sink in. No. What was all this trouble at school, anyway? One of the kids said something about Brian. Since then, he's been bossing all the other kids. Everything's his. And this morning, he smacked one of the younger children. I mean, the teacher's understanding enough, but obviously she thinks it's up to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Who the hell are you? Oh, I'm, I'm Tina. I work here. Do you know? Oh, Betty said, will you be visiting bar or would you like a bit of supper or something fetching? Uh, I'll, I'll see. Oh, and it's nearly closing time, you see. You what? Marvellous, what a flaming homecoming this is. I say, uh, what? Tina. Tina, do you, do you go to pictures? Now and again. And what time does Last House finish? Oh, about half ten, I think, normally. Mind you, it depends on picture. Aye. Uh, yeah, I'll bet it does. <laughs> Glasses, please. Hey, come on, you've had your supper enough, Tom. Let's be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Wear him, I swear it. Oh. Hey, where's our jam? Down the cellar. Down the cellar? 
at this time? What's she on about? Vera, keep your hair on. We don't want no fuss. Yeah, I see my husband skulking in door holes. I'm not supposed to say no. You saw a shadow. What would your Jack be doing hanging around there anyway? Apart from hotels, he's chucking it down with rain. Hang about, sunshine. We saw you lurking round Baldwin's. What game are you on? Or is his orders, Vera, right now? Drop it, eh? Listen, what do you set me for, eh? For a tin of rice pudding? I'd rather not mention that, Vera, no. No. Look, come off it, you. There's only one thing you'll stand out in the rain for, and that's a woman. Well, I never stood out in the rain for you, not once. Give it a rest, Vera. Jack's only doing his job. Doing his job? He's got a job, Auntie, at home. And I'll tell you something else, he doesn't do that right, neither. No, he's playing away in the rat. Vera, look, I know you got picked for Star Prize, but for God's sake, I'll down with you. Look, ya. never you mind. There's funny goings on here. I mean, where's the Majesty, for instance, eh? Out on the razzle. Well, I'm not having him at it. Jack, come here. Yes, Betsy. Do you think you can take your Vera home and sort this out behind closed doors? Right. I don't you see Betsy Shawnee gone. She only needed one for Star Prize. Right, you do you your best for King and play big country. Oh. Um. Yeah, one number of a Caribbean holiday and I've got him acting the door. Oh, Jack not found dirty stop out? No, no such luck. Are you catching bus with me or do you not value your life? Oh, I've done all I can, love it. I'll get caught. OK, don't. <sighs> Betty, what? Where is she? It's quarter past eleven. It must be a long picture. Well, well, she, perhaps she's gone for a Chinese or something. Right, Betty. Tardo. Oh, you met Tina, have you? Uh, yes, briefly. Yeah. Uh, I'll film all that chatting tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully. You know what they say? Never come on on unexpected life. Yes, I'll do. We'll go and get the bus. Ta-ra. See you tomorrow, love it. Ta-ra. Oh. Uh, Ta-ra. Ta-ra, Betty. Oh. Home sweet flaming home. Uh, yes. I'm afraid it's Mr. Wilton again. I'm terribly sorry to be such a nuisance. Yes, I know he's going to Amsterdam, but I checked with his secretary before leaving the office and she said it wouldn't be till the morning. Yes, I know it's late, but I just thought, one last try. Mm -hmm. Oh, <clears throat> DP. Well, uh, basically, it concerns that rather foolish memo I sent you. I mean, th thankfully, DP, I, I know you appreciate outspokenness, but I think perhaps I did go a little too far. And I just wondered if there was any possibility. I see. L look, DP, sir. I, I recognise you don't normally back down on major decisions. Yes, I agree. Small cogs are easily replaced. No, it was just I didn't want to depart on a sour note. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for talking to me. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right, DP. Um, tomorrow, then, uh, your office. I'll look forward to that. <clears throat> Good night, DP. <laughs> you rang him then? Yes, yes, I thought, why not? I thought, be bold. <laughs> Go for it. And you're seeing him tomorrow? Yes, 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 I am. Good. <laughs> I'll get your milk ready. How's Emily? Oh, well, it's a bit awkward with Percy there. <laughs> He's got this gigantic scrapbook going back oh, almost to the Boer War, I think. And he insists on getting it out. <laughs> How Emily sticks him amazes me. Really how stupid, Paul. Oh, bad. Oh, come on now, home, James. Oh, bad. Come on. Pardon me for butting in, but is this an excuse me or can anyone join in? Alec, love, you back. Look, Paul, he's back, the <clears throat> man himself. I'm that chuffed to see you, love. 
Missed me, have you? Hey, how did you swing it? Just got a fast plane and come home? Before I give my answers, I'd like to hear yours, like where you've been tonight, for instance, and what the hell was on here? Uh, oh, well, I bet dropped in to see Stella, you see, and I, I were detailed off to give her a lift. Oh, uh, a fireman's lift, was it? Uh, that strippers grab you specialise in. Oh, OK, OK. M me hand slipped. Well, I, I got it smacked, didn't I? Look, honest to God, I think it was just me being stupid. This is daft. Oh, I was chauffeuring her home. That's a gospel, son. The full story. Pack of lies. Uh, no, no, no. On my mother's grave. Right, out. No, you got it wrong. Out! Out. Oh, aye. Fine tales you've all got. First I get Betty's version, you've gone to pictures. Then I get Rigby's, you've been to see Stella. And now you trot yours out. Licensed Vicks do and Laughing Boy's just a mate. Well, I don't believe a word of it. It's a pack of lies. It's lie upon lie upon lie. Have you done? Why? How much more do you want? Oh, look, lady, you've been caught at it. Have you finished? Are you going to start acting your age? I'll tell you what, I'm feeling my flaming age. You want to try one of those Middle East cabaret tours? It's creased me. And then to come home and find you've been made a right mug off. This is all in your mind, Alec. Oh, I, of course, I flipped my lid. Couldn't be the desert sun. I must have been crackers before I set off. No comment. I trusted you, Bet. And I've not let you down, you daft apeth. Look, I've had a couple of nights out with Paul, but now it's happened. Anyway, he reckons you told him to look after me. As if I'd say that to him, of all people. Any looking after were his idea. Oh, and happened you were only too keen to aid in a bet. Stop twisting everything. Now it's happened. Oh, no. I suppose that pathetic performance in the hall was a mirage, was it? Be fair, Alec. You know Paul. He's got wandering hands. OK, he made a pass or two, but I handled it. Yeah. Well, why put yourself in the position of having to, eh? Answer me that. Look, I weren't in Perda, were I? I mean, you go swanning off on these wild stunts. I'm not walling myself up. I'm entitled to a bit of a social life outside the pub. Social life? Social life? You've been parading for everyone to see with this random little burke. You've made my name mud. Alec, grow up. Paul's a joke. He's a bragger. What he'll tell his pals about you and him is nobody's business. If he talks, I'll have him, and he knows that. Ah, if it is talk. Alec, I swear it would be. Oh, he were indoors, wouldn't he? Here for the night, no danger. That's rubbish! Oh, eh? The slap and tickle had started, hadn't it? And then what? If he's a joke, he certainly had you laughing. Mind you, you like comics, don't you? I mean, there was a time when you thought I were a joke. No more, Alec. No more. I'm listening to no more. Don't forget your presents. They cost a lot of money. You'll not get presents from Paul, no matter what Stella gives him, unless you're slipping him a bob or two on the quiet. If you weren't a bit on the small side, I'd clock you for that one. To hell with your flaming presents. Stick them in a jumble, say. I and you with them. We're definitely on the other side of midnight now and continuing our nighttime viewing. You, you! Oh, you little devil! I want my dad. Where have you sent him? <gasps> Nicky, I haven't sent him anywhere. He's gone. He can't come back ever. You have to understand that. Don't blame me, Nicky. I couldn't bear it. Not you blaming me as well. I need you to love me, Nicky. Like I love you. Here. If you're not coming to bed, you best have these. That spare bed's not heard. Much obliged. You're a right soft, Nelly. You know that, don't you? Thank you. Any more snide remarks? I'd better get in training. 
What are you on about? I've got that pub to face tomorrow, haven't I? There'll be a good few in there enjoying this smirking and wisecracking. Oh, I, I'll be a big soft Nelly, all right. And why? Because you have been carrying on. Oh, Alec, we've been through all this. It's kids' stuff, is this? Come on, love, come to bed. You must be tired out. That's why you're not thinking straight. Look, I'll not be got round. Suit yourself. Sit here and sulk, then. Derek, what's the matter? Don't you feel well? It's my tummy. It won't oh, settle. Well, you poor thing. When did that start? Five past six, precisely. In the office. I, I was... <sighs> chatting to Ray Griffiths, personnel manager. Suddenly I felt ill. Was it something you ate? No. <sighs> I think it's my stress problem again. Oh, well, I'll get you something. Got to have you fit for work tomorrow. Work? Tomorrow? Oh, I, I don't know that well, I... It's your decision, Derek, but if you don't feel fit enough... But you are seeing DP, aren't you? Oh, yes. I'll get you something for your stomach. Soon be morning, Mavis. Always darkest before dawn. What was that, Derry? Nothing. Nothing. Well, I'm mind, but I'm told. It's not your fault, is it? Uh, here's the crisp. Yeah, I'll stick something Hey, I say, what's this then? Started working night shift now, Jeff? Uh, no, I just stayed the night at a mate's house. Oh, yeah, whole night party, was it? Oh, yeah, you do a little up on them grants. It wasn't a party, it's just a few of us got talking. I missed my last bus, so I kept down in the corner. Oh, yeah. You live the rife or highly used students on the quiet, and it all comes off taxes. Uh, students pay taxes as well, Mr. Roberts. Oh, do they? Well, they hope they pay taxes a bit quicker than they pay the rent. Um, I think you wanted. Hey? Hey, it's adding up, you know. You'll have to move yourself. He thinks he's on his daddy's yacht, that lad. Your brothers are right lazy bones. It's parading round all night, now we can't shift them. Mickey Tilsley, I hope you're up and dressing yourself. I'll give you to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, I'm coming ready or not. Who's Mr. Dozy then? Making his mam late. Nikki? Mummy, won't be a minute, love. Still don't believe you. Are you talking in your sleep or what? Sleep? Sleep? Do you think I've had any sleep with what's been going on in my head? Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Supposed to make it all right, is it? Just sorry and everything's back to normal. No, what I mean is, I'm sorry that you're still obsessed with this idea that there's been something going on between me and Paul. 2,000 miles I flew. All I could think of was soon be home. Soon be seeing my wife again. Look, Alec, we've spent most of the night on this. I'm not spending all day on it as well. Oh, are you not? More important things to do, have you? Look, stop it, will you? Just leave it alone. We'd had a bad night after what happened yesterday. And then when I went into his room this morning, he just wasn't there. He'd gone. It gone where, Gail? Nicky's gone. I don't know. What do you mean, gone? But he's just gone. Gail, had he, um... Is his bed still warm? I don't know. Hang on a minute, I'll go and look. Go where, though? I 
don't know, Alf. It's just that he wasn't in his bed this morning. Oh, blimey. Uh, Mr Roberts, oh. uh, could I have a word about this rent situation? Well, I think we've had enough words, haven't we? It's, it's pounds, shillings and pence we want now, not words. Uh, well, we accept this, you know, for the time being. The five, what good is that against 80 quid? Because that's what it is this week, you know, 80 oh, flipping quid. Would you keep your voice down? Have you seen what he's offering me? Five quid? Yeah, so I gathered. Yes, girl. It is still a bit warm, yeah. Oh, well, thank heaven. He can't have gone far enough. Are you sure he's nowhere in the house? Look, it's all I can manage right now. Ma'am, I've looked everywhere and he can open the lock on the front door because I've seen him do it. All right, love it. I'm coming straight over. What do you expect me to say? No, I'm taking the car, all right. Yeah. Hey, Gail, have you phoned Ivy? See if he's there. No, I was going to ring her after you. But look, I'll pop round and then I'll come straight to you. All right, bye. <laughs> car keys. Yeah, what's going on? I've told you, Nicky's gone missing. Oh. And look, will you take this as a kind of down payment? Yes, I'll take it and then I'll do that with it. Look, you owe me 16 times. That is rent we're talking about, not I have purchase. Oh, Ivy, you've not seen Nicky, have you? No, I haven't not seen Sit when were you? Oh, no, I mean now, this morning. No, of course I've not. Oh. Well, what's up? He's gone missing. He weren't in his bed when Gail went to call him. Oh, no, you don't mean yes, that. Yes, I do mean it. I'm going round there now, so if you want to come with me. All right, I'll walk over what we have it. Right, morning. Morning. Nice morning, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I dare say. Right, I'm ready. I've got the car. Listen, Vera, I won't be in. Will you tell Baldwin for me? Oh. What's going on? Well, summer is, that's for sure. Do you know if I've had the fair share of upsetting that family? Hey! I'm talking to you! Oh. Derek had a poor night. I think he's got a lot on his mind. Well, you'll soon be able to spend all your time looking after him. Yes, I will. And I can tell you something, I'm really looking forward to it. Derek, you're going to be late. Yes, well, mustn't be late, must we? You know, I'll always have very happy memories of my time working here. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. And it's not work I look down on. You mustn't think that. It's just that life doesn't stand still, does it? Things change, don't they? Not a lot. Not in my experience. Why then? Oh, here. Come here. Let's have a look at you. Oh. Now, remember what we said? What we said? Yes, when we talked last night. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, I remember. Bye, then. Bye, love. And what was said? Well, it was private, Rita. Well, that's why I thought it might be more interesting. No, Derek was just getting a bit overwrought about things at work, and I told him he mustn't. He expects too much of himself. That's the trouble. Oh, so wherever he's gone, at least, it looks like he's gone of his own accord. Uh, yes, but why, though? Oh, it doesn't matter why, Ivy. Never mind why. The important thing is to find him. Yes, well, I've wrong everybody I can think of. Uh, and the police, you've all them? No, not oh, yet. Gail, come on, I think you should, don't you, Ivy? Of course I do. Look, you go and get yourself on that phone. Ivy and I'll scout round the street. No, I'm coming with you. Gail, for heaven's sake, now, come on, think about it. You're the one they're going to want to have to talk to. Dad. And anyway, Nicky might come back. Don't worry, my darling, we're going to find Nicky for you. Yes, love, we won't stop until we do. Right, come on, Ivy, let's right. get weaving. Gail, police, go on. And what about when the staff start arriving? Is this going to be carried on in front of them? Yeah. Well, these be the same ones that were running around like headless chickens, trying to cover up for you, deceiving me as to where you were. All right, Alec. Bosom pal Betty lying through her false teeth, Jack smirking away, and that other little madam enjoying every minute of it. Expect me to worry about what they might think. They already know a damn sight more about this than I ever will. There's nothing to know, Of course Alec. there isn't. But there isn't. Oh, so why worry what the staff might think? Yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind if just for once you got here before me. I mean, don't think I'd be insulted or anything. Yeah, I would. I got caught up in the traffic jam. 
traffic jam? Yeah, outside the bathroom. <laughs> My dad got in first, oh, so. stop it. You'll have me in tears in a minute. Look, I've got to go and get one of Mitchell's wagons started. Shouldn't take long. So make a start on the Orion. It's just a regular service and uh, one of the brake lights is down. I will do. And if anyone comes in while I'm away, try and stall them, mate, till I get back. It's not like you don't trust me. <laughs> Wonder why that is. I went all down Venable Street, you know. I sit them shops at the bottom, where the toffee shop is. But no, nobody's seen hide nor hair of him. And where's Ivy? Well, she shot off in the other direction towards the middle. Oh, road. goodness. Oh. Oh, it's you. Fred, so let's hope I can be more helpful this time. Well, it's like I said on the phone. Yes, so. Nicky, he's disappeared. Yes, come on. Shall I disappear this young lady? You two can have a talk, eh? Thank you. Come on. When you say he's disappeared, he weren't in his room when I went in this morning. I mean, he'd slept in his bed, but he'd gone. And his clothes had gone with him, had they? I mean, he dressed himself. Yeah. School clothes? Yeah. And have you checked with his school? I rang them and I said, uh, would they tell me if he went there? Perhaps I'd better make a check on his schoolmates. Nicky got himself into a bit of trouble there yesterday. Somewhat was said about his dad, apparently. And Nicky went wild. He flew at another kid. I had to go and bring him home. And you've no idea where he might have gone? Oh, well, what's this then? Don't tell me you brought your car in. Who are you? Hey, look, kiddie, I haven't got time for games. Shouldn't you be at school anyway? Look, go on, buzz off. Hey, did you hear me? I said, go on, out. Are you again? Hey, what is this? After the job, is that it? Look, kid, you can't hang around here. Yeah, I can. Oh, you can? This is my dad's garage, is this? Your dad's? Yeah. What well, do you know? I thought it was my dad's garage. My dad's. Well, who are you then? What's your name? I'm Mark. Nicky. Nicky. Tilsley. Tilsley. Oh, your dad. Oh, yeah. Your dad's garage, eh? <laughs> what are you doing round here then, Nicky? You're just passing or what? We searched this place. She's gone to talk to his classmates. And there's a call gone out to all patrols to keep a lookout for him. Look, Gail, we've got to organise a search. Yeah, that comes next, apparently. Why next? Why not now? What are we waiting for, Gail? No, Ivy, I'm only telling you what they told me. Are you sure it's not in the wardrobes? There's a lot. I've looked everywhere. Yes, I know, I just Even stupid you... places. I ended up looking in the fridge. Oh. Look, what I can't understand is he got himself up, he got himself dressed, he let himself out, and all without you hearing yeah, the thing. so I'm supposed not to sleep now, am I, I'm I, not Ivy? saying you're not supposed to sleep, Gail. I'm saying I can't understand it, that's all. Yeah, well, some of us can, Ivy, and it's not going to help blaming Gail, you I I'm right. not blaming Gail. Oh. Nicky. Oh, Nicky. He's here. Oh, thank God, oh. little love. Did you find oh, him, love? You found me. You turned up at the garage. Oh. Is that where you went? You went to Daddy's garage? Oh, Nicky. So who holds whip hand in a do like this? Him or her? Well, women can get away without they want if they set the stall out right. I mean, especially Bet. She's had that much practice. <laughs> you all right, you two? Oh, yeah, great. yeah. Thanks, 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 yeah. Betty. Look, I nearly didn't come in this morning, you know. I wish I'd have had a choice. I was already here. Well, I did warn you. He came back early, Betty. Neither of us knew you were going to do that. He came back because he was missing you. I know. Believe me, we've had a long night of it. But also believe me when I say It'll be all right in time. I can manage it. I think so. Hey, mm. see, Betty. Oh. Ain't he looking well? <laughs> a bit jet lagged, that's all. We were all just saying, Alec, it's great to have you back. Yeah. Is it? <clears throat> I think you've got a fair way to go, lovey. <sighs> oh, you're back. So go on then. Tell me. What? The story. I mean, you're bound to have one, aren't you? About why you left the garage, why you left the service I told you to do. Oh, yeah. So go on, what was it? 
Aliens from another planet landed, eh? One of the wipers on the spaceship wasn't working, so they asked her to go and have a look at it. Now, look, this little leg come in. I had to take him to see his man. Ha! Is that the best you can come up with? So go on, which little lad was it? Have you found him? Oh, thank you, Seems Nicky had got it into his head that Brian was still at the garage and Gail were trying to keep him from him. Yeah, he's safe though. Oh, That's all right. he is, yes, thank heaven. She's going to keep him up school for a day or two uh, so they can be together, see if that might help. That's a good idea. Oh, I'll go and get us lunch. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da, Oh, I see you can afford some things then. Well, I've got to eat, Mr Roberts. Yes, yeah, so have I, and all. That's why I let the flat. That's why I've got this shop. I see you prefer supermarkets though. Uh, well, it's a bit cheaper. You know, you've got a right cheek. Well, I'll tell you something. I want that money this afternoon. I want 80 quid this afternoon. I'm sorry, Mr. Roberts, I can't. Yeah, well, it can start packing then. Never mind eating. Start packing. Two pints of bitter, please. Right. right. No, hang on. Hang on. I'll get these. I want to buy this little lad a drink. You might as well have one if you want one. Oh, thank you. I was going to pay for them, but... Uh... No, you're not now. I don't mind who buys them. How much is that, Tina? One fifty-six, love, please. Cheers. Listen, this little lad here was here all this morning when he brought my grandson back, and I will buy him a drink every day for the rest of his life if he wants one. There you are, love I'll leave you to it, but thanks, love. Thanks for looking after my grandson. So you misjudged me? Oh, yes, I have, I have, yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard looking at you as a hero, but I'll do my best. <laughs> On your CV, I reckon that Gail should not be working. She'll be stuck in a home looking after them kids. Oh, well, yeah, but my <coughs> mum were never at home, and I didn't have all right, didn't I? Hey, the wet shake of Arabi hiding herself this dinner time. I don't know, he looked dogged off to me earlier, and I don't think her ladyship uh, is looking her usual self. Oh. Betty, love, yeah. I know I promise you a break once I come back, but if you could just do it tonight for us, I want to lay on a meal, make it a bit special. Where is he, anyway? Having a lie down. We're both a bit short of sleep, to tell you the truth. Look, I'll come in tonight on one condition. What? That you promise me by tomorrow all this will have blown over. Betty, if I can just have tonight, just the two of us, a bottle of wine, a couple of steaks, me and my red knight. Look, you don't need to go into details, <laughs> love it. <laughs> by tomorrow, I can promise you it'll be one big smile. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Rita, the house is ready for us. Does that mean they've finished building it? <laughs> No, I mean, it's ready for us to buy. That was the solicitor. And he wants us to go around tomorrow and sign whatever it is you have to sign. Do you mind if I, if I phone Derek? Of course not. Oh. It'd be interesting to see what excuse he has this time for changing oh, his mind. You're not going to worry me with talk like that. He's as keen on this house as I am. Oh, hello. Hello. Could I speak to Mr Wilton, please? I beg your pardon. Does. It's Mr. Wilton, Mr. Derek Wilton. Oh, thank you. What's so? up? She says he doesn't work there anymore. Are you sure you got the right number? Yes, I'm. I recognise the girl's voice anyway. Rita, you saw him. You saw him go out of here this morning. Mm. You don't think it's some joke? Well, you did say he'd had a bad night. <laughs> yes, I know. Worrying about things at work. Oh, you don't think it's... What should I do? There's not much you can do, love. Just wait till he comes home. And then ask him. Well, uh... No, should I not ask him? Well, I, I think it's best if you don't rush at him. Let him tell you whatever he has to tell you in his own good time. That's you and your dad on the beach. Do you remember where that was? Blackpool. Yeah. My bucket fell in the sea and my dad had to go and get it. That's right. I'll tell you what. Would you like to choose the ones you like the best? And we'll put them in your room next to your bed. Yeah. All right. Let's get choosing then.
Hello, Mavis. Ma, it's good to be home. You know how some days seem longer than others? Why? What have you been doing? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary. Just been very busy, that's all. At the office? Of course. Where else would I be? No, I... I just... I mean, I like the old firm. You know I do. But, uh, they don't have to demand their pound of flesh. No room for slackers there. Well, I'll, I'll make a cup of tea for you, shall I? The cup that cheers, yes. And I'll just wash and get changed, and then we'll hear all about your day. Not another <sighs> word about mine. I know I go on too much about work anyway. Probably bore you to death. No, you but tonight, don't. vow of silence from me, and we'll hear all about your day. Ah. Two minutes. How much is uh, half a bitter? 39. How much is half a mild? 37. I'll have half a mild. Right. <laughs> Copper enough, are you, girl? Yeah. Yeah, well. It's a good job you don't smoke or drive a car. <laughs> yeah, or run a yacht, or I'll be really in stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think you were uh, in tonight, that's your look. Well, Bet asked me to come in. Ah, oh, we're now fall again, is she? Look, we could do without cracks like that. She wants a quiet evening with the husband, if you must know. Yeah, well, they'll have a lot to talk about, Betty, won't they? Oh, so you can not only eat, you can drink as well, can you? Uh, just a bit, yeah. Now, you can't say I've not given you a fair warning. I told you I wanted the rent this afternoon. Did I get it? Did acres like it? It was like I was right. telling you, Mr. Right, one Roberts. last chance. I want it now, this minute. Mr. Roberts. Look, the lad haven't two apes are up together. This has nothing to do with you, Vera, if you don't mind. Now, are you giving me it, or aren't you? How can I? Right, then. Until you do, you're not spending one more night under that roof. So if there's hope you want, get yourself round there. I'm coming round in 20 minutes. And when I do, I want the keys, I want the rent book, and most of all, I want you out. Well, that wasn't very nice, were it? What will I do? There's nowhere to go. Yes, there is. You can come to our house. Oh, Mrs. Stuckworth. No, I mean it. Here. Back door key, go shift your stuff in. Make <coughs> old misery go sappy. And you can have that room for as long as you like. Well, are you sure, Mrs. Duckworth? Well, of course I'm sure. You'd have made a bad series, aren't you? Anyway, I don't like to see folk talk to like that. Well, uh, I'll go and get my stuff. Thank you, Mrs. Duckworth. And thank you, Mr. Duckworth. It's very much appreciated. Right. What for? Well, Alf Roberts has chucked him out. Anyway, I told him he can have our spare room. What? Alec? Oh, no, no, why not? He's doing notes. Well, that's curly. I mean, he's a student. He's not like the best of us. Look, he's a nice lad. We need him a roof over his head. If you don't want to share it with him... Well, you know what you can do, don't you? I thought we'd have a, a nice meal and a talk. Yeah. Thank you. You've had a long walk. Yes. Yes, well, uh, there was a lot to think about. Alec, it is good to have you back. And I'll tell you what it is I've been thinking, shall I? Well, unless you want to wait. I've till... been thinking what a fool I've been. A complete and utter fool. Because I loved you, Bet. Now, you might not have loved me, but never mind about that. I loved you, and I trusted you. And I've never done anything to betray that trust. <laughs> Only just taken up with the biggest womanizer in town. Oh, not again. Not only can say what you like, I'm not listening. You spent I don't know how many nights in the company of this man, on these premises as like as not, in my home, in my... Yes, why not? In my bed. No! And of course, everybody knows, don't they? Everybody. Staff certainly do. So it's a pound to a penny everybody else does. Oh, Ali. The only person who didn't know was me. Well, I know now. I know now, all right. Look, you think you do love And it. so, there's only one answer, isn't there? I've thought about it. There's only one way out of this situation, which has all been of your making. Your making, lady, not mine. I know that, love. And that is... Really. I want a divorce. Ah, that might come as a relief to you. I don't know. I don't 
care very much now what you think or what you might have to say. I'm just telling you. I want a divorce. I thought you'd gone, my little sweetheart. Do you know I nearly sat with my machine before I remembered? What? <laughs> Curly. A bit difficult to forget, Vera. Yeah, well, just make him feel welcome, eh? You what? Yeah, take him a cup of tea or bacon butter out, eh? What is he up with all these special things? The last time I had breakfast in bed before our tenor were born. Yes, because that was the last time he did all to deserve it. You start behaving like that again, you can have a bacon butter every morning. Get her up, <laughs> come on. Oh, come on, Jack. Lad's been through hell and I water, what with Shirley ditching him and that swine owl chucking him out onto the street. But lad, he needs a lie in, a bit of luxury. That's his mercy. <laughs> Listen, what about me? You want to try working down that flaming bar with the Gilroys eating each other alive? Oh, Jack, look, take him a cup of tea, OK? I mean, I hey, have time hey, outside. Hey, hey, how long are you planning on Curly stopping here, Vera? Well, just till he gets back to normal. He's never been normal, Vera. Oh, Jack, why, why won't you be a bit more caring, eh? I will. I will have feed me pigeons. Look, I'm warning you, Jack Duckworth, till I see you show some sign of milk of human kindness. Here. You're going to have a bath in that as soon as I fed me pigeons. Oh, Derek, come and sit down. You've hardly touched your breakfast. Busy day, Mavis. Tired of industry waits for no man. Derek. Yes, my love. What, what exactly are you going to do today? Just oil the wheels of commerce as normal. Derek. I know. No? What? Yesterday I phoned your office to have a talk with you and... and the girl told me that... well that you weren't working there anymore. Come and sit down, love. Do you want a cup of tea now? No. Derek, you must talk to me. I'm your wife. I, I need to understand. I offered my resignation unless they fully reinstated me. I accepted it. It's not that I don't understand. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I didn't want to distress you unnecessarily. I knew within a few days I'd, I'd find myself an equivalent position, and then I would have announced it to you as a, a fait accompli, as they say. You should have told me. I didn't tell you. Because I love you. What have you been doing this last couple of days? Oh, I'm not a man to lie idle, Mavis. I've been down the library, checking through the advertisements, looking up old and trusty contacts, which is what I should be doing now. Oh, Derek, you can't go, please. I mean, well, there's so much to sort out. There's the house and, and my job with Rita and... Derek, sit down, love. S sitting down's not going to get me very far, Mavis. Look, leave it to me. There's nothing you can do, and your worrying's not going to help. Just trust me. Have I ever let you down? <laughs> it's like... Do you remember that card they used to put up on the television? What card? Do not adjust your set. Normal service will be resumed as soon as possible. I promise you, it will be. So don't fret. Mr Gilroy? What? Well, I was just wondering how you thought we're getting on. Are you pleased with what I'm doing? You know, there are some pubs, love, that lay out little dishes of peanuts and stuffed olives, but I'm afraid the Rovers isn't one of them. <laughs> no. no, you'll find we don't give anything away for free here. Not even compliments. You set one foot wrong, love. You'll know about it. Until then, enjoy yourself as much as you can. Uh, listen, boss, I just want you to know I did my bit. I tried to see him off that Paul Rigby, a slimy toad. He's got a life of their own. Does he self a pal of yours and all. Good job you've got some real mates, Alec. <laughs> 
Oh, yes. And where would they be, Jack? I am your man. I would stick with you through muck and bullets. Yes, well, don't bother rooting your national service. Get out, just make sure you have a proper suit and tie. What for? Well, you want to look nice and smart when you stand in the dock and testify about Mrs Gilroy's infidelity. <laughs> Hello, Nicky. Hey, where's your mum? I'm on ahead. Oh, she was with you there, she. Listen, why don't you go in and see if you can find yourself a little something? Tell Sally if you can have a treat. Right. <laughs> Hello, love. Hey, I dare say there'll be something in the shop for you and all, Ooh. little lady. <laughs> how's the uh, how's the lad going on? Well, a couple more days and I think I'll feel all right about him going back to school. Yeah, well, listen, forget that the kid is. I wonder. Hello, oh, Vera. Gail, just the person I was looking for. Really? How are you fixed for corned beef? Pardon? I'm Mr Baldwin. He only fancies tuna and mayonnaise. I don't know where some men get the daft ideas from, do you? Well, I've got some lovely ham ready for you. Do you, you think Sally could cook, you know, with a sandwich order? Uh, I'm not in today, Vera. I think you'd better speak to Alma. She runs the cafe now, not me. Well, I could better buzz on down there, then. Oh, yeah, just a minute, Vera. What's going on? I do the sandwiches at the factory, you know that. You used to do, Al, but not anymore. Why not? Because there's talk. What sort of talk? Talk about how a man that can evict an innocent oh. young lad out onto the street, what might do with his potted meat. Yeah, and we know where the talk comes from and all, don't we? Right, sorry, Dave. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Girls, can, can you just hang on, hang on a minute, will you? Just hang on a minute. Flaming here, they're serious now, that's it. They both are. Mind you, you see, I can see these points of view. What point of view is that? Well, no bloke is going to go jumping for joy after slaving away to keep his little nest going. He comes home to find some fellow with his feet under the table and a few other places besides. Hey, what other places are the Jack? Oh, now, come on, Betty. We're all old enough to know what's been going on. Well, I wish you'd tell me, cos I don't know. Oh, come on, you knew what that rat was after the first time you set eyes on him. No, Alec. Not Alec. Flaming Rigby. Hey, uh, can we get served here? Oh, um. All right, Ivy, what's your fancy? Oh, at lunchtime, I only have... Oh, God. Oh, go on, I've got a bottle of lager, Betty. Oh, I had a little G&T to give oh. me a spark. Oh. <laughs> you know, to be honest, it'd be nice to get down to some proper work. You know, I've never been one of them who was scared to roll my sleeves up, put my marigolds on. <laughs> but quite frankly, you know, there's a fair bit of work to be caught up with down that cafe. I mean, things are built up, you know, so... I know uh, that Gail's not been giving it a full attention. Oh, no, 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 with, no, I know. understand, believe me. I mean, I was in no way criticising, but, I mean, you can appreciate it's made things a bit... Off the door round. Off the Yeah, I can see you being mucked around by it. Yeah. Oh, oh there you are. Thanks, love. You see, it's not only that, but it's kids as well. Mm. They're the ones that get really confused. Never know whether the mother's going to be there when they need her. Quite frankly, Alma, mm -hmm. I wouldn't weep if Gail chucked it all up and stopped at home and looked after them beds. Well, you know, to be honest, Ivy, it wouldn't be the end of the world for me. I mean, you keep a clean paper, don't you, Ken? Well, I should hope so, yeah. Uh, not like some of the rags we get nowadays, all muck and nasty gossip. I wouldn't use them in my convenience. I really wouldn't. No, I've never been keen on seeing people's laundry washed in public. Never. No, no, right. right. But I suppose there are some stories, aren't there? <laughs> stories that might even tempt you. I mean, even the righteous have to demean themselves sometimes for a bottle or two. <laughs> what I mean is, of course, I... Just because there's a clientele for rubbish, that wouldn't tell the record. Would it? No, no, of course it wouldn't. Good, good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, another half, please. Okay. Usual, Alf. Uh, no, no. Well, if it's not what you want, you better be quick, mate. No. What do you want, Jack? Your Vera. Is that to take away, Alf? No, no, I mean, I thought she might be in here. I can hardly go dashing into the factory after Look, now, now, I know I'm only a husband, and that doesn't mean an awful lot round here at the moment, but can you let me into the secret? Well, it's, it's all this curly business. It's gone crazy. You can say that again, Alf. Yeah, but if she thinks she can blacken my name just oh, because... Oh, no, hang on. You were a little bit heavy-handed. He you? owes me £80. Pounds. Money isn't everything, is that right, Ken? Uh, yes. Uh... Unless you're playing the game, Alf. What game? Well, he spends a couple of nights in the rain, and then he... Let it crawl back with the reddies in his hand, eh? Very cunning, huh? I'll leave it to me. I'll give him the nod that the door might still be open if he mends his ways, oh, eh? Oh, thank you to do no such thing. I don't want that lad in my shop, never mind my flat. And you can tell that to your Vera and all. Yes, it's very kind of you to try and fit me in at such short notice. But it is urgent. I'm sure you can appreciate that. Certainly. Hairdressers, is it? 
Solicit. Be quick, isn't it? Best to strike while the hot pot's hot, Betty. Sorry. 3.30 this afternoon. Well, that's wonderful. Now, where exactly are... Hey, Tina, take over that, would you, don't you? Alec? Oh, what is it? Can't you see I'm busy? Jack will do that. Am I in the right pub? Is my name not over that door, Alec Gilroy, licensee, or have I wandered into the flying horse by mistake? It might not be over the door for much longer, dear. Oh. Uh, Jack? Jack, would you take over here? Excuse me. Right, what is it? Look, I've got to say something. You and Bet, that's what it is. This whole thing is completely out of hand. Well, it's got out of hand without my help, Betty. Yes, but you're not doing anything to help it, are you, with all this talk of divorce? Oh. Oh, so the girls have been talking, have they? Oh, yes. So what's the news? Hmm? She got frightened then? Sent you over to start the peace negotiations? <laughs> oh, yes, I thought the talk of divorce would soon bring her to her senses. I'm not a bitter man, as well you know, Betty. But, I mean, uh, I'm not the sort that would demand unconditional surrender. But one or two terms here. Uh, and the first is an apology and a full confession. You're out of your mind, Alec Gilroy. She's not sent me in here to talk to you. She's on the phone right now to somebody who'll do that job. Oh, and who's that? A solicitor. And she's seen him this afternoon. I just dropped in for a quiet drink, but, uh, well, it was like being in the bar in Star Wars. Well, when's it any different? I mean, that's half the fun of the Rovers, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Derek. Hello, Derek. Well, at least you two will soon be free of all this inner-city madness, lucky devils. Sorry? Well, when you move into your nice semi on the edge of the world. Oh. Ah, right, well, um, I'll, see I'll be getting back. Try again. Has uh, Ken touched a nerve? Haven't you discussed this house? Derek, You've I told think... Rita, then, have you, Mavis? Well, I guess you could hardly keep it a secret, Derek. Not from me. Look, you're going to have to think very carefully about this house. Personally, I don't see how you can even consider it when you're without a job. And the longer you leave I it, Derek... I am not without a job, Rita. I'm in between jobs, that's all. Those who have no jobs may never get a job. I am merely in transit from one to another. Have you found one, Derek? Mm, no, not one that's entirely suitable, no. Well, have you found anything? Mavis, our future needs handling with the utmost care. Those who grab at anything end up with nothing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go upstairs to make some phone calls. Old colleagues and the like. Well, shall I ring the estate agents? Leave the phone to me, Mavis. Please. What a disturbing, yammer. What's up? Biscuits to your liking, are they? Yeah, great. If you get any complaints, you know, just write them on a piece of paper, leave them outside your door. I'm sorry, I've not had the telephone uh, wired in for room service yet. Uh, well, Mrs Duckworth did say, you know, make yourself at home. Ah, uh, easily abused is our Vera. Easily taken advantage of. That girl would give you her last biscuit. You know, I've had to protect that girl all of my life from her own generosity. No mean task, Curly. For example, take you. Well, I was thinking of, you know, of giving her something every week. How much? Well, what about a tenner? Give it to me. Don't upset our Vera with the talk of money. She's much too sensitive. Give it to me and I'll make you another cup of tea. Do you know what? I think we've got some of them chocolate biscuits with little chocolate mm. bits inside somewhere. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> In advance, I'm not getting behind Alf waiting for you to sort out your arrears, lad. Well, I haven't got it. Uh, not at the moment. Oh. Well, we're just going to have to find something for you to work your passage, then, aren't we? The pigeons need mucking out. Go on, then. Now. Oh, no time I have a present, Curly. There we are, love. Thank you. Thank you. Ta-da. Bye-bye now. Ta-da, love. Bye. Mavis, you're going to have to do something, love. Well, we'll start now. Let's have that card out of the window advertising your job. I mean, there's no point in giving up your only source of income just yet, is there? Now, you go upstairs and make him a nice cup of tea and try and talk some sense into him. 
Look, you've got to work it out between you, Mavis. You tell him. Do you understand, Mavis? But if your husband has simply misread the situation, can't this be talked through? I've been as soft as sugar with him through thick and thin, but no more. I want a divorce, and I want my fair share of everything, and I mean everything. I know it's not going to be easy, Mrs Gilroy, but I must recommend that, for the meantime, you stay on in the matrimonial home. When we come to court, being seen to, to leave the mutual house too easily can often turn out to be a financial disadvantage. He'd have to send tanks in to get me out of there. Now, can I ask what grounds you have for accusing Mr Gilroy of unreasonable behaviour? I hope you don't hesitate because you can't think of anything to say. It's just the opposite. There's so much I don't know where to start. Let's work backwards. Right. <clears throat> He's just spent the last two months in the desert sharing a camel with a Welsh exotic dancer and her 12 budgerigars. Now, I know for a fact he consorted with her in the past, but that was when she just had the one python. I hope your pen's full of ink. Could take a bit of time. Thank you. Mm, perfect. Shouldn't you be getting back downstairs? Derek, we must do something about the house. We are doing something about it, Mavis. We are buying it. Oh, how can we, Derek? Be reasonable. I am being perfectly reasonable, Mavis. Now, the mortgage was agreed in relation to my previous salary. Now, my new salary... Oh, salary? Be... What salary? I haven't got a salary. What's that in your hand, Mavis? Rita took it out of the window. Why? Oh, she thinks it's silly, both of us being out of work. Where are you going, Derek? For your sake, Mavis, I can no longer block this interference. Well, so far, we're on fire. There's nothing here that's cause for levity, Rita. No, I can see that. Now, Rita, I'm normally a man of few words. Oh, Derek, leave it, please. I can't do that, Mavis. All right, come on, go it off your chest. Now, Rita, I understand that recently you've had an unlucky life in regard to the men you put your faith in. As you know, I've been very sympathetic to you. Thank you. But you can't let the poison in you poison everybody else. I mean, look at Mavis. Look at the distress you're causing her. Me? Who else? I mean, without you setting off doubts about my capabilities, she would never have got into this state. Without you panicking her about the mortgage on the house, I'm trying to doom her to a lifetime of slaving away in this dark little dungeon. Oh, Jerry! I'm but... sorry, it's got to be said. Without your interference, Rita, she would still be the normal, cheerful little Mavis that I cherish. Really? Yes, really. So, I'll thank you kindly to keep your nose out of our private affairs. And as a sign of that, I suggest you put this card straight back in your window. Everything is as it was before. Are you sure about it? Rita, please. Thank you. Now I must get back to work. Put me in my place, didn't he? Oh, Rita, I'm sorry. So am I. Well, where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. It's all right. You stay on the slide, eh? I'm just going to sit over there with Pauline. It'll get easier. Have, uh, have you thought about giving up the cafe? Spending more time with them both? I need to work. You're not short of a bob or two right now. Give the money from the garage and, uh, oh, and the insurance. Hardly makes me a millionaire. No. Hey, but if you spend a bit donning yourself up and getting out of it, you never know. A millionaire might come along and whisk you away from all this. A millionaire will take the two kids as well, will he? It's a bit unlike you, Pauline. Well, maybe not a millionaire, exactly. No point dreaming on that. So what do you dream of? At the moment, I dare not risk dreaming. Where the hell is she, Betty? Well, she's obviously got a lot to talk over with the solicitor. What can she have to discuss? She's in the wrong, not me. 
Can't be that much to talk about. Good Lord, woman, we've only been married for two years. <laughs> a lot of dirty water goes under the bridges in two years. No, 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 he'll be talking her out of it. That's what's happening. <laughs> She's too shamefaced to turn up here. Do you know a solicitor that talks himself out of money? Do you? <laughs> Stay away, Aiken. Oh, well, you know the old newspaper saying, all human life is here. And one or two that isn't. Yes, tell all my little dove. Oh, hi. Right. Well, talking of doves, I've got you some. Oh. Get me a ladder drink while I can shut out my back. Yeah, lager, please, Jacko. But I know you like presents, you know. But go on, Curly. Have a chat with Mr. Barlow. He hadn't had an intelligent chat all day, you know. Well, he's only seen our chat, so how could he? Here we are, madam, sir. Hey, I love. Something you've always wanted. You like it? It's birdseed. All these years, I've always thought you ate in my pigeons. What a nice gesture that is. They'll love it, thank you. <laughs> it's not for your pigeons, Petal. No, it's for you. That there's your dinner for the next six months till you start treating our little orphan here proper. I warned you, didn't I? Didn't I? I said it wouldn't be him that'd end up with bird muck all over him. Where the hell have you been? Shopping, Alec, with your little plastic cards. Do you like it? That's the last flaming thing you're going to go wasting my hard-earned money on. My hard-earned money, Alec. All right, have it your way. Oh, I intend to, Alec. I really do. That's one thing you can rely on. Oh, yeah. Well, I certainly can't rely on you for anything else, that's for sure. Never mind the domestic side, which is bad enough. But I pay you to stand behind that bar, swinging your earrings between certain prescribed hours, and if you're not there, I'm entitled to know where and what you've been up to. And I am quite prepared to tell you. Right. What do you think, Alec? I've been out to see a man. Well, that hardly surprises me. Very classy he was. Quite tasty. A man of distinction. Oh, now that does surprise me. Wait till I tell you what he does for a living. Well... If he's picked you up, I can only assume he's a road sweeper. Very good, Alec. Go on, treat yourself to a little smile. I want to have the pleasure of seeing it wiped off your face. He were a solicitor. That's what he were. A what? I think you heard. You've been to Well, a... you could hardly expect me to sit here doing me knitting while you took me to the cleaners. Interestingly enough, that's exactly where he says I can take you. Did he just? Your move. Try kneeling down. Expensive. Solicitors. Worth every penny. Now where are you going? To earn my living, Alec. Just a minute. Are you aware of the cardinal virtue in working in a pub? Oh, do tell. I'm all ears. Dependability, Bet. Dependability. You're late. You know that. So? So, you're fired. You can't do that, Ali. I just did. Now ring your solicitor friend up and see how he likes that. The secret of the perfect scrambled eggs, Mavis, is to turn the heat off just before they're done. There's the papers. I continue cooking in the pan. I mean, some people serve them too dry. They should be moist and creamy. I do know how to make scrambled eggs, Derek. I brought all the papers up with the job vacancies in. Oh, there's no need to hint. I know what I have to do. There's one thing that destroys a man's self-respect. It's his wife showing a lack of faith in him. Well, I don't see how my bringing up the papers means I've got a lack of faith in you. It's not your fault, Mavis, that you're easily influenced by outside opinions. And when they're as forceful as Rita's... I am not easily influenced. And Rita was only trying to help. I mean, you'd no right to bite her head off the way he did last night. I resent her implying that I'm the kind of man that's content to sit at home all day and let his wife be the breadwinner. She implied no such thing. All she said was I could have my job back and keep the flat to tide us over a sticky patch. I must say, for someone who's made such a staggering disaster of her own affairs, she's got very little basis for sticking her nose into ours. <laughs> that's unnecessary and unkind. Derek. Let's stop all this. We've got a crisis on our hands. Mavis, within days, within hours even, I shall have new career prospects. Almost certainly brighter ones than any DP could have offered me. Derek. In fact, he's probably done me a favour. Sweetheart, 
I know you're just putting a brave face on it for my sake, but you mustn't. I'm not some silly little woman who needs protecting. I'm your partner. Mavis, repeat after me. There is no sticky patch. There is no crisis. Go on. There is, there is no, no sticky patch. patch. There, there is, is no, no crisis. crisis. This is nothing but a temporary hiccup. There's another cup in there if you want one. Perfectly capable of making me own, you know. All right. Be petty if that's what you want. Waste a perfectly good pot of tea. Well, go on then. Go on what? Look, I know it's not easy to back down. Just take a deep breath and get it over with. I, I won't say no more about it. <laughs> I'm backing down for nothing. You know, it's funny. I would have sworn the first thing you would have said to me this morning was that you didn't mean what you said about firing me from this pub. Well, I wish it didn't have to come to such unpleasantness. But you can stomach it if you have to. Oh, yes. I see. Not content with wrecking my marriage. You want to take me home from me. And me job as well. You want the frocks back that you bought me, eh? The shoes, the tights. Do you know, I have a couple of pairs upstairs I've not worn. I'll go and sort them out. Bet. There. Sit down. Look, I'd just like to point out, it wasn't me who wrecked our marriage. I wasn't the one who betrayed my partner's trust. I'm not even going to dignify that with a reply. Look, you must see, if we're living separately, it's impossible for us to go on working together. Very well. But I feel I must warn you, I'm not moving out. My solicitor told me to stay put until terms are agreed. And staying put, I am. All right, well, that's up to you. I'm not going to forcibly inject you. But I can't say it's going to be very comfortable for either of us living under the same roof. But as licensee, I can insist you don't work behind that bar. And what are you going to tell the staff? Not to mention the customers. They are likely to notice. Well, if I have to, I'll tell them the truth. I've got no to be ashamed of. Have you not, Alec? Derek says it's only a matter of time before it gets another post. Well then, maybe he's right. But you don't think so. Oh, it's not up to me, love, is it? I got my wrist well and truly slapped yesterday for having an opinion. Not by me. I didn't approve and I told him so. So I'm asking you. Mavis, love, you know what I think. I think you crack as if you take on a big mortgage when your husband's just lost his job. OK, he may get another one soon, even at his age. But if he doesn't, where will you be then? I must say, I thought marriage was going to be a lot easier than this. Oh, did you? Mm. I mean, I expected ups and downs. I'm not that naive, but I thought, well, I thought you'd at least pull together, both of you. Not if one's pulling you over a cliff. Well, of course, now she's been to solicitors. They've had it. Well, it's a known fact. Once you get them in, it's finished. You're not wrong, kid. I've been close to it once or twice myself. I've always pulled back, though. Yeah, well, I suppose when it came to crunch, you knew you couldn't pack your marriage in. I couldn't afford the fees, more like it. I think they're both bluffing. It'd only take one, you know, to give in. Oh, I don't know, Betty. It's gone well past the lover's quarrel now. Mm, if we don't take care, it'll go well past the point of no return. <laughs> what do you mean, if we don't care? What can we do about it? Keep our trap shut. So that's what I mean. Like I told you yesterday, if this thing spreads, you know, and it gets everybody start taking sides, well, then the fat's really in the fire. You hear me, Jack? What are you looking at me for? I've not said now to nobody. It's not nobody I'm bothered about. It's your Vera. I mean, if we could keep the lid on this, well, then maybe it'll shit cool down. And... <clears throat> and, uh, Bet won't be working today. Uh, she's feeling a bit off. Cold on the contrary, you. Bet's never felt better. Mm -hmm. Not like getting the shove to make a girl bounce back. Come on, 
We don't want to wash our dirty linen in public. Tell them the truth, you said. That's exactly what I am doing. Please don't call me, love. What's the matter, Alec? Feeling embarrassed, ashamed, touch guilty, perhaps? No, I'm not. I did what I thought was right under the circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure our staff are aware that we're having one or two domestic difficulties. <laughs> and I know we can rely on their loyalty and discretion. Right, as long as that's clearly understood. Hey, what do you mean about getting the shove? What does anybody mean? Been sacked, fired, booted out, made surplus to requirements. How many do you want? You can't fire you. You're boss. Do you know something, Jacko? Until last night, that's exactly what I thought. Just oh. shows you, doesn't it? Oh, I am sorry, love. I never thought you'd get to this. I mean, what are you going to do? Hang on in there and collect my 50% of whatever he's got and enjoy life. What's so great about working my little socks off behind this tatty bar, anyway? Oh, I thought I heard you out here. Hello, Nicholas Ridiculous. Hello, silly Billy. Nicky. Oh, it's all right, love. I've been called worse before. <laughs> is, he, is he OK now? Go on. He's improving all the time. I have you know you just interrupted a biology lesson, thank goodness. Oh, tricky stuff. Yeah, it's not as bad as it's going to be in a year or two. That's when a dad comes in useful. Oh, kids learn it from their pals. You know, my mother never told me a thing about sex. She was the type that lay back and thought of England. She could have put me off for life. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Just let me finish this and then I'll, uh, I'll get you a cup of coffee. Oh, well, that'd be nice, but uh, I, I haven't really got the time at the moment. Uh, anyway, this, this wasn't really a social call. I didn't think it was. Don't worry, Alma, your nail varnish can remain unchipped. I'll soon be back on duty. Oh, no, no, it's just the opposite, love. We're coping very well. I never realised that peeling spots could be so much fun. Well, Nicky will be back at school tomorrow, so we can all get back to normal. Oh, no, 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 no there's no rush. I mean, it's like your mind law was saying. Oh, saying what? Well, just that your kids need you here at the moment. And I mean, I know I'd not feel happy if his nibs ran off again when you were working for me. He won't run off. Well, I mean, I sincerely hope he, he wouldn't, love. I mean, I, I wouldn't want it on my conscience if he did. Yeah, well, I reckon the sooner young Nicky gets back to school, the better. Because Molly coddling at home will do him no good at all. And a bit of fuss never hurt nobody, either. Come on, Alf, his world's been turned inside out. What he needs now is a bit of security. He needs to know his mum's going to be there every day when he gets home. Oh, is girl giving up work, then? Well, if she's any sense, she will, yes. Well, there's no embarrassment on my part, but I can see his point of view, though. Ah, oh, it's very reasonable of him. No, I'm not always reasonable. I wasn't always sure of it. Well, in certain circumstances, we can all go over the top. It's not the first time in my life I've been rejected. It takes a bit of getting used to. Mind you, what would you know about that? Ooh, why wouldn't I? Oh, a man like you, you've got it made. I mean, I'm not stupid, but I say anything thought-provoking. Everyone just laughs. You say exactly the same thing and they listen. Not always, Curly. No, because you command respect. You've got presence. I tell a dog to pick up a stick, it just turns around and laughs. You're too hard on yourself. You know what Shirley said just before she split? She said, this relationship is going nowhere. Now, I'd have sooner have said, I hate you with all my heart. At least there's some passion in that, but no. That's what I inspire in women, negative feelings. I bet you've never had a woman walk out on you. So now where are you going? I failed to see that's any business of yours, landlord. Because if you're off to see that solicitor again, you're wasting your money. I'm acting perfectly within my rights. Nobody's arguing. You've made me a lady of leisure, and I intend to enjoy it. You're taking this very lightly. What do you expect me to do, Alec? Lock myself away in the attic like that mad woman in Wuthering Heights? Of course not. Do you want me working down here? No. Well, then, it doesn't seem I've much choice, does it? Look, what? I wish one of you'd stop all this nonsense before it goes too far. Betty, look. He's suing me for divorce. He's fired me from my job. I don't think there's much further it can go, do you, Cock? Right. Hey, if you promise me that you won't open your gob, I'll tell you. Jack, I'm surprised you need to else. Come in. Yeah, just a minute, she's here. Mavis. I think it's your solicitor. Hello, Mr. Goodman. Uh, well, today, well, uh, I'm afraid my husband's away on business, actually. Yes, I'll phone you tomorrow. All right, Mr. Goodman, thank you. Goodbye. They're anxious for us to complete on the house. So you put them off till tomorrow. Now, what do you think that'll achieve? 
Well, Derek's out now, going round his old contacts. He's very optimistic. That he can pull the Wilton chestnuts out of the fire in the next 24 hours? Well, miracles do happen. Last I heard, I've had something to do with loaves and fishes. Oh, I wish you'd stop going on about it. Well, it's only five minutes since you were begging for my opinion. Yes, well, now you've given it ad nauseum. Will you just please shut up about it? <gasps> oh, Derek. Have you had any response? Well, there were murmurs about we must have lunch sometime. Talk about streamlining, redundancies, rationalising. No mention of an actual job as such, no. Well, Mr Goodman's just wrong. They want us to complete on the house. I didn't know what to say. Right. Well, we'd better go in and get this deed done. Oh, Derry, don't be so stupid. She's been on at you again, hasn't she? I can see it in your eyes, both of you. Looking at me like I've got failure written all over me. Well, I, I hope it gives you some satisfaction to know, Rita. You're right. I am a failure. I don't know why you married me, Mavis. I was no good to Angela. And I'm no good to you. Twist your arm to come out to lunch. And listen to a pal while she moans about a problem. <laughs> worth paying over the odds to look at that tight little bum in them trousers. If I'd have stopped in Spain, I could have been sunning myself on a millionaire's yacht by now. Or serving in some grotty bar. I am serving in some grotty bar, or I was, till that little gnome gave me the boot. You weren't going to mention his name. I didn't mention his name. I said that little gnome. He's bluffing, babe. I'm not. Do you really want a divorce? That subject is taboo as well. Let's talk about something else. Quite right. I hate these people who only want to talk about their own problems. Let's talk about mine. I don't know. I come in your shop looking for a shoulder to cry on, only to find myself upstaged by Wilton throwing a wobble. Well, he keeps telling me off for interfering. She keeps asking for me advice. Can't we? Oh, forget him, Cork. We've come here to get away from them. He's a proper little nerd, though. Subject taboo, remember? Derek, mm. nor Alec. Mm. Alex, nor a nerd. He's a lot of things, but he's not a nerd. Well, not like Derek, anyway. Well, it's been lovely, but I best get back. I've no right to leave in that state as it was. You'd every right. It's time you started thinking about yourself a bit more. It's time we both did. Stuff on that kid. I'll drink to that. You know something, Reed. We've got a lot in common, you and me. For a couple of bright girls, we can certainly be a right pair of plonkers. All in the past. Absolutely. From now on, we give a wide berth to fellas whose first name begins with an A. Coffee ladies? What do they call you, love? Anthony. <laughs> Touch on the young side, anyway. Is she back? Look, if you're referring to your wife, no, she's still out. I see. Thank you. You know, I can't help feeling sorry for him. For him? I brought it on to her. Oh, he looks so miserable. He brought it on himself. She did go gallivanting. Oh, so now you're taking his side, I'm are you? I'm not on nobody's side. Keeping my job's my main concern. Oh. I just don't like to see folk unhappy, that's all. The saddest thing of all is, though, to only take one of them to make a little gesture, oh, and they'll be back in one another's arms. Mm. Thanks, I wouldn't care only she's bunging jobs on me that she should be doing herself. It's just do this, Phyllis, just do that, Phyllis, all day long. Hey, and that's on top of all my own work, too. Well, Alma Sedgwick's never been thrilled about making bait and butties, has she, love? Yeah, what? She's more dressed up to go to a cocktail party than frying chips. But that's what it's all about, isn't it? Finding herself another meal ticket. Oh, I will be glad when Gail comes back. I bet. Ta-da, love. Ta-da. How's the patient then? Oh, 
Well, he's calmer now. I think he needed that little blow up. He's, he's rather volcanic, is Derek. Oh, a seething cauldron of unexploded gases. Absolutely. He hides a lot of emotion beneath that placid exterior. Anyway, I think he's finally agreed to, uh, to accept the situation. He says that we're not going to complete on the house. Well, that's the best move he's made all month. Rita, we've put you through the mangle a lot lately. I am sorry. You've had enough troubles of your own. Listen, I'm just happy that you've settled your differences without coming to blows. Two divorces would have been more than I could stand. Two? Well, you know, if you left here, that would be like a divorce, wouldn't it? Ah, you're back. For an hour or so. But I'll try not to get in your way. Unless, of course, you prefer me to sit on the red wreck with all the other little bag ladies. Bet there's no need for any of this. I'd said as every need, seeing as you've made it crystal clear that I no longer belong here. Look, I, uh, I saw this person today. Oh, yes. And he was saying that most marriages could be saved if only people would just be a bit more reasonable. And did he say which people could be a bit more reasonable? I shouldn't think for a minute he meant the fellas. Both. He said they ought to just sit down and discuss the differences in a civilised fashion. Sounds a bright lad, this person. Go on, then. Say something civilised. It's not just down to me, is it? You say something civilised to me, Flower, and I will say something civilised back. Right. You have a pleasant lunch? I've told you before, that's none of your business. I bet, for goodness sake. Look, first of all, we re-establish communications with friendly small talk, then we move on to the larger issues, all right? What, like who gets what? Small talk. Small talk. Right. Right. Yes? I had a nice lunch. I'm looking very smart, too, if I might say. Yeah. You always were a showstopper. Walking into a place with you on my arm, a little fat chap like me, it made me feel right proud. Well, you've got to keep the flag flying, haven't you? Alec? Bet. The food wasn't brilliant. The duck Montmorency was tough. Yeah. But we enjoyed ourselves. We? We? Oh, I might have guessed. Eh? You don't get all dolled up to go out to lunch on your own, do you? No, of course I don't, no. We had champagne and oysters. And then he had a suite in this hotel. By gum, it's right what they say about love in the afternoon. Yes. Betty, Betty, will you come in here for a moment, please? Betty, I'm, I'm sorry about this, but uh, I'm afraid I have no alternative. I shall require you as a witness. Oh, it's not to do with me, lovey. No, uh, Betty, I want no part of it. Betty, I went to see my solicitor today. Ah! So it were a solicitor person. And Betty, he advised me that if attempts at a reconciliation failed, which they obviously have, then it would be easier all round if one of the parties admitted guilt. Fine by me. Tell him to admit to being guilty of being a totally irresponsible little torag. On the contrary, tell her to admit her adultery with one Paul Rigby, which I might actually just asked on, but not in the presence of a third party. Tell him to admit to being a pig-headed, stupid, arrogant little idiot who doesn't deserve a wife like me. Tell him... Not again. Grandma, I have you staying for tea. Oh, I can't, lovey. I've got to get back and give your Uncle Donny supper. Only he gets upset if I don't feed him myself. You know, he's funny like that. And you'll not get any supper at all if you don't get in that bath pronto. That's not fair. I'll end up like a skeleton. I'll tell. I don't care if you tell the MSPCC. You are not sitting down at my table like that. Of course, you know what's behind all this, don't you? He's got to keep checking that you're still here. Where else would I be? Well, it's psychological, isn't it? Everything usually is. 
His daddy's gone, so he has to know that his mum's still here. I'll be here when he needs me. What he doesn't need is to be tied to my apron strings 24 hours. Oh, come on, nobody suggesting I think that... you were, Ivy. Telling Alma that I shouldn't go back to work. That I should stop here and be permanently at my kids' beck and call. All I said was I thought for the present time your place was at home. Yes, well, if you don't mind, I'll decide what's best for me. And right now I happen to think that's going back to work. I can't believe you'd be that selfish. Nicky's at school all day. Sarah Louise goes to playgroup three mornings a week. Pauline's very good, and my man's got plenty of time on her hands. They'd be a lot worse off with a mother who was suffering from depression from being stuck at home on her own all day. Plenty of young wives do. Yes, well, maybe they've got husbands to support them. Oh, come on, don't make lack of money your excuse, Gail. You made a tidy sum selling Brian's garage. Our garage. And I've put that away for the children's future. I'm not touching it. Oh. Well, even so, me and Donna would be glad to help. I mean, we could let you have a bit of something each week. Just stop at home, girl, where a mother belongs. I don't need your money, Ivy. I don't want it. Look, we're both earning. We can it's manage to... It's not a question of money. Yes, I'm a mother. And I don't think I'm a bad one. But I also have my own life to lead. So tomorrow, I'll be going back to work. And it's not up for discussion. Tea? My, my, what a pair of busy bees. Why aren't you sat down having a cup of tea and complaining about last night's telly like you usually are first thing in the morning? Her upstairs, that's right. Oh, cracking the whip, is she? Tell her, Christine. Tell her what she's got to look forward to. Oh, it's murder. She's not a human being. She's just two eyes watching every little thing you do. <laughs> then criticising and talk about me. She's cut down on everything. How much butter we use. Say with sugar and milk, not to mention tea bags. Do you know she'll be recycling them soon? She inspects every sandwich I make to make sure I haven't put too much ham on it or whatever. And even measures up washing up liquid that I'm going to use. And she's put up all the prices. How much? See for yourself. 40p for a cup of tea? It's a wonder we've any customers left. We've lost a few, I can tell you. Percy sugged them for a start. He walked out yesterday saying he expected best bitter for 40p, not a weak cup of tea. What's use of me staying here if Percy Sugden doesn't come in? Have you nothing good to say about your new boss? No. Watch out. Hello, girl. You're a stranger. Come to see how we're coping, have you? I've come to start work, Alma. Like I told you on the phone, I was. Oh, yes, of course you did. You know, it completely slipped my mind. Well, you've come to join a happy band of workers, hasn't you, girls? <laughs> right, well, you better get your overalls on and get stuck in then, haven't you? And that's her being pleasant. Phyllis! You've not done a very good job of wiping these sauce bottles. There's more around the neck than there is inside. Oh, it's like this all the time. Hey, there's another yucky one here. Hey, yeah, uh, get this down, yeah. I'm all right, I don't want anything. But what's the point in putting up with an headache when you can get rid of it here? Oh, yeah. You had a bad night, hadn't you? Well, I were all right once I got to sleep. Well, yeah, what time was that? I just kept thinking about Gail, you know, going back to work, leaving that child with a child mind. I mean, it's just another word for a complete stranger, isn't it? Why does she have to be so contrary and stubborn about nearly everything? Yeah, well, she do not see it that way, love. You know, look, while you were tossing and turning... Oh, I didn't keep you away, did I, love? No, not for long, but long enough to have an idea. Why, Lee? Why don't you give up work and look after your grandchildren? Me? Yeah. We can manage on what I bring in. And it's time you gave up that job, slogging your guts out for Baldwin. Oh, no, I'm not in favour of that at all, Don. No, I like my job and I like bringing home a pay packet at all. Yes, and so does Gail. Yes, but she's got kiddies and I haven't. That's the difference. And anyway... What? Well, I've suggested an idea of my own to her. Oh? Yes. I've told her if she finishes work, I'll make her money up. Out of my own pocket. So I can't give my job up now, can I? Morning. Oh, uh, what's the matter with you taking that stuff? I'm feeling fragile, Betty. That's if you're really interested. Mm. I've got a very delicate constitution at the best of times. 
All the trouble and aggro I've been having lately, it's a wonder I'm not on my deathbed. Look, you can put a stop to it right this minute, just by being reasonable, and you know you could. Morning, Betty, love. Morning, lovey. Oh, some this smells nice. Mushrooms on toast. Mm. I just fancied some. Get yourself a, a cup and have a cup of tea. Oh, ta, I will. Hey, you'll never guess who I saw last night. Oh, love. Do you remember Beryl Johnson from Bright Street? She wore miniskirts before they'd been invented. Oh, where that married that yank that had put some money in him? <laughs> well, I thought she had. Oh, you should have seen her last night. She'd no stockings, varicose veins, greasy hair, all scraped back. A frock looked like she put it on straight off clothesline. She looked like an alky to me. Oh, I wonder what went wrong. I was dying to her. Mm. But, uh, sorry, this is more. Yeah, that looks it. Do you want a bit, love? Oh, yeah, cut her that corn rock. Oh, do you oh. know I love mushrooms? Oh, I don't. mushrooms. <laughs> Go on. You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? The pair of you. Eh? You know I'm not feeling well. I've got a dicky stomach. You sit there like a couple of gannets at a trout farm. Ah, well, it's just another little entry, isn't it, eh? For the diary for the solicitor. Gastronomic cruelty. As if I live long enough to write it down. They're going potty, here. Oh, perhaps it's all this trouble that's making him ill. I mean, they do say, you know, that stress and being unhappy can do that. You see this smile, Betty? It's not really a smile. It's the lid on a screen. Hi. You did come in then. Hey, should have been a drop stain at all. Oh dear, what's up with her? Alma. <laughs> you could say there's rumblings amongst the staff here. Well, I still don't know why you came back. I mean, you'd be well shut of this dump. I've never been over fond of places with hot stoves lurking in the corner. Everybody wants to put me back in the home. Ivy offered me money to make me stay at home. She said what? It's right. She said she'd sub me if I gave my job up. She's incredible, that woman. Just incredible. Well, I thought that she, if anybody subs my daughter, it'll be me. Are you having trouble getting services, Robbers? No. No, I just thought you'd been studying for rather a long time, that's all. <laughs> And that wasn't one of her best efforts either. See you later, Betty Love. Right, don't love me. Very nice to you. Hey. What? Where's Madame de Barry off to today? If you wanted to know, why didn't you ask her? The only communication I'm going to have with her in the future is through my solicitor. Well, our solicitor's expensive. You're going to be broke before this is all over. Now, what does money matter, Betty, when principles and morality are at stake? I never thought I'd hear you say a thing like that. You must be serious. <laughs> is it my imagination, or do I detect an atmosphere in this pump? And I don't mean a stale ciggy smoke, either. You must be joking. Yes. Tina, will I have a word? <clears throat> Watch this face. Yes, Mr Gilroy. That was all the sotto voce stuff with Baldwin. Sotto what? Look, whispering. Oh, that? Well, actually, I was asking me what I did on my early time. Is it all anybody can think about? Sex? Well, that's been my experience, Mr Gilroy. Ah. Hello, Mrs Rigby. Hello, Betty Love. You're looking well. Oh, thanks very much. In the circumstances? <laughs> yes, you too. <laughs> what can we do for you? Is Bet not in? No, she's not. In that case, Alec, darling, you can get me a G and T, a double. And shall we drink it in the living room? <clears throat> One double gin and tonic, is it then? A single. Oh. And put the tonic in. Only find a drop in an empty bottle or two. And forget the ice and lemon. What's Stella Rigby doing here again? Well, she must have found out it were her husband that Bet were bothering about. Which she hasn't. Well, perhaps she's come to seduce Alec. You know, uh, tip for tap. Oh, give over. What's all this nonsense about, Alec? What nonsense are we talking about? Water privatisation? England to keep the ashes? What? I think you know what I'm talking about. Bet and Paul having an affair while you were away. It's not just nonsense, it's ridiculous nonsense. Oh, is it? Of course it is. I mean, Paul's my husband, and Bet's one of my best friends. Mm, I had a best friend once, at least I thought I had, till he told a girlfriend I broke my leg in an accident on my back and he'd better take her to the pictures instead. And as for Paul being your husband, well, I've seen him in a few situations where you wouldn't have thought he were anybody's husband. There's no need to get personal, Alec. Personal? This is personal. It's my wife he's been fratting with. He has. Have been. Oh, why can't he? 
Got one of those little radio transmitters strapped to him so you can follow his every move like they do with polar bears. I don't want to get bitchy at it. Oh, come on, but... why break the habit of a lifetime, Stella? One gin and tonic. Thank you. Thank you. Where's the tonic? Well, I put it in. I didn't think you wanted it drowning. <laughs> I'd like to be able to decide for myself, though, Betty. Yeah. I check your gin, Alec. I think some water's got in it. What was I saying? Oh, yes. That's just not Paul's type, love. Anything in a frock that's still breathing is Paul's type. She's too old, love. Far too old. Paul's got this idea he's a sort of Rochdale Blake Carrington. Irresistible to young ladies. They just humour him, poor soul, so there's no harm done. But as for Bet. He just felt sorry for her. I mean, with you away, she hardly had a dizzy social life, did she? She was beginning to look like a mug of cocoa. So he took her out for a drink a few times. I thought it was very gallant of him. Well, I didn't think it was very gallant. When I came home to find him creeping in here after midnight, thinking the pub was empty, I might add, squealing and cavorting like a couple of red setters, that to me was a little bit more like Randy than gallant. A state they'd been in on more than one occasion, according to my staff. <sighs> You're exaggerating. Emma, ask Betty. Go on, she's only out there in the bar. Ask her. Well, I'm not moving until I've seen her and told her what a cow she is. Well, if that's how you feel, Stella, don't, don't let me stop you. Would you like another drink while you're waiting? Well, you can give this one the kiss of life. And I'd like ice and lemon. Certainly. <laughs> you know, it's not like Betty to make a mess of a gin and tonic. <laughs> I'll have to have a word with her. Hi, V. Oh, hello, lovey. You just start. Yeah. Yeah, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm all right, love. Look, she's feeling anything but all right. Dear her. She needs holiday, a bit of sun on her, a few bevies. Amy and Jack will make a bar some more. Yeah, great idea, but we'll talk about it. Hey, look, I'm glad I've seen you because I've got a long-distance job booked. Harry Slinger and his greyhound want a lift to a dog track in St Helens. But look, I'll cancel it if you well, don't feel... Don't be so silly. You'll do no such thing. I'm perfectly all right. I'll see you a bit later on tonight, yeah. OK? All right, much later. Yeah. See ya. Oh, hi. A dog tracker. I know what you're thinking, Vera. And Don has taken this Harry to places all over the country and he's never better farming. Look, I won't think you know, honest I will. Come on, I'll buy you brandy. I'll buy myself for no, purely for medication reasons. Okay. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Audrey. Oh, dear, you're looking a bit peaky. Is anything the matter? Well, it's what's called working for a living. Something you won't know much about. <laughs> I'd like a word with you, Ivy, actually, when you've got a minute. Oh, well, you drag me in here, is it? What do you want a word with her? Oh, it's somewhat nothing. Nothing you need bother your head about. You're not mixing things again, are you? I mean, you've got that look on your face. When have I ever mixed it with Ivy? <laughs> Deliberately, anyway. Where would you go on holiday, Ken? You know, if you just pack your bags and go to Morrissey. Me, Vera? Well, let's see now. I'd, uh, I'd like to fly to wherever I could join a Bedouin camel caravan and then trek across the Sahara with it. The desert is supposed to bring you closer to your soul than anywhere else on Earth, and it's also stunningly beautiful. Well, actually, I'd like to go to Benidorm. Come on, grab your lager, Vera, and let's trek across to a table. See you all there, Ken Bowie. <laughs> I wonder sometimes. <laughs> Oh, I thought we were drinking brandy. You are. We'll be stitching his fingers together drinking brandy at dinner time. Come on, cheers. Uh, cheers. Where is Sahara? It's Africa. Africa? It definitely is puddled. <laughs> right, we're off, Ivy. Only uh, I want to have to see this wonderful summer frock I fancy in Roxanne's. Really? <laughs> no, what it was, um, Gaya mentioned about you offering to help her out, you know, financially, if she were to give up work. Yes, that's right, I did. It's very noble of you, actually. I well, said that to Gail, but, uh, well, I think Alf and me are far more suited to do something like that. And probably in a more substantial way, being in business life. Now, what's all this? So I said to Gail that uh, if she should need any money, that we'd rally around, you know, Alf and me. After all, we don't want you going into debt just because oh, yeah. of some rash promise, do we? <laughs> just thought I'd let you know. Bye. I wish you'd talk to me yeah, before you made rash day. promises and all. <laughs> She always has to go one better, doesn't she? Yeah, especially where I'm concerned. Still, save you, Bob, too. 
Well, go on. That's a bit. Open your ear piece. Very nice. What's wrong? Got a visitor. Who? Stella Rigby. What is she? Like? Been here for a bit. Alex had a word with her. I better go and see the answer. Mm. Stella Rigby's in there. I know she is. Stella love, what a nice surprise. Don't Stella love me, Bet Gilroy. Oh dear, you've been got at, haven't you? I've been given a few facts, if that's what you mean. Listen, Stella. Facts like you've been having it off with my husband. Having it off? That's a bit vulgar for you, Stella. Anyway, it's rubbish. Not according to Alec, it's not rubbish. He's lying, he's making it all up. He's got proof. What proof? Proof of his own eyes. And what Betty and them have told him about what went on while he was away. Have you asked Betty? Well, have you? Did he, or didn't he, come home at midnight to find you bringing Paul in here? Both of you half cut. We were not half cut. Well, you were acting as if you were. It wasn't what it looked like, Stella. We'd been out for a quiet drink. And you said, would you like a nightcap for love? All eyelashes and chest, I shouldn't wonder. It wasn't like that, Stella. Wasn't it? No, it wasn't. You forget, Bet. I've seen you operate scores of times. Yes! <laughs> Listen who's talking. I know I'm no angel. I don't know anybody who is not amongst our crowd. But there are rules. And one of them is you keep your sticky hands off somebody else's husband. Even one like Paul. Nothing happened, Stella. Well, Alec thinks it did. And he worships you. Just thought I'd let you know. And don't go dragging Paul's name through any muckraking of a defended divorce. Just admit adultery and get it over with. You owe me that much as an ex-friend. Stella, come back here. I just told Bet what I think about her. How it's probably water off a duck's back to somebody as brazen as her. <laughs> and you think you've got trouble, Carl? Yeah. What time does Alma usually get back from a break? You tell me. Sometimes it can be four o'clock in the afternoon and she comes in sucking a peppermint. That covers up a multitude of sins. She throws away to about even more when she's had a drink. Yeah, she's very strident, very strident. You're not going to waste your life, though, are you, Martin, just bumming round? He's very good at that, aren't you, Martin? No, I'm not bad. You've got to have a talent to be laid back and not get bored, you know? It's not easy. Yeah, but not for the rest of your life, surely. I never said that, did I? Actually, I'm thinking about joining Greenpeace and devoting the rest of my life to saving the Earth. Are you seriously? Mm. Of course I'm serious, yeah. I don't know how you'd go about joining Greenpeace, like that. Well, everything's looking very spick and span. Yeah, I like to get tidied up of an afternoon. Say it's doing it all the rush just before closing time. Yes, but aren't you risking the staff thinking it is closing time and getting a bit slack? Oh, dubious psychology, Gail. Where's your and Christine, by the way? I told her she could go. We're quiet, and she did an extra sandwich round this morning. Look, I think we ought to get something straight, Gail. You do not make management decisions like that anymore. Not while I'm here. I do. Not easy to work with this shit. <laughs> Me again. <laughs> Can't keep awake, can I? Oh dear, something wrong. <laughs> no, nothing. Do you want a cup of tea? No, 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 I'm not stopping. It's just that uh, I saw Ivy at dinner time and I said that uh, if you should need financial assistance, Alf and I would provide it. She didn't seem too pleased, actually. I can't think why, because I mean, that would have been a crippling burden for her, that, wouldn't it? She can't earn a fortune working for my board, and Dad's just a taxi driver. <laughs> Mum, will you listen to me, please? Go on, then. I don't want any help from anybody, financial or otherwise. I'm going to carry on working. I like having a job. I don't like being stuck at home. Now, I had enough trouble convincing Brian about that. I'm certainly not going to change my mind. Now he's... Have you got that straight? Gail, yeah, look, the last thing I want is to interfere in the way you run your life. It seems to me you've been doing nothing else all morning. Well, that was Ivy's fault if she hadn't interfered in the first oh. oh! Do you know, Mrs. Roberts, you are our best customer. At least you would be if you actually have a rate to drink anything. Oh, Phyllis, you are taking a long time that washing off. 
Do you know, you must love work, putting up with that sarcasm. Well, she's another one who'd like to see me jacking it in and trotting off home. Why? Because I'm surplus to requirements now, aren't I? But don't you worry. I can stand any amount of sarcasm. You know, it must be nice having your daughter where you can keep dropping in for a chat. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it, Mum? <laughs> yes, it is. You don't, you don't think I'd Welsh on you, do you, Don? I mean, it's not my style to do a runner on, on, on a man I owe money to. In fact, it hurts me to think that you even think like that. Look, Harry, just to stop me worrying, because I'm a great worrier. The dog stops there while well, you go in that pub and borrow the 40 quid. Look, leave the dog with me, don't disturb it. Disturb it? I'd like to kick it all the way back home. Call yourself a greyhound. You, I'm talking to you. You were supposed to chase that air at supersonic speed, not amble after it like you're on, on, out on a stroll. You've skinned me tonight, you know that. I'm a broken man, Don. I'm a broken man. Don't spare me the tears, Harry. Just get in that pub and borrow me fare. I've got an home to go to. I won't be able to hold my head up. Harry Slinger can't afford to pay his taxi fare. They'll probably warn me off. And as for you, I've a good mind to tie you to a Doberman Pinscher and tell him you don't like Germans. He didn't mean it. He just walked in and gone straight upstairs, lovey. Has he? Just thought I'd tell you. Thanks, Betty, love. OK. Alec. What? Fair old vanishing act. Gone nearly seven hours. None of your business where I go or how long I'm there. I'm not asking because I'm not interested. Good. Is there nothing you'll not stoop to? Not much, no. I've taken my cue from you in that. Deceiving me with Paul Rigby, you can't stoop much lower than that now, can you? I didn't deceive... Anyway. Thanks for making sure Stella got the wrong story. My pleasure. I bet she took some persuading, though. She knows me, does Stella. And she knows her own husband. I only gave her the facts. Facts? They're not facts anymore. They're unrecognisable as facts. They're just your version of them. A version that you've concocted in your nasty little mind because that's what you want to believe. Because you feel let down, slighted, God knows. But now you're using your version, nobody else's, to try to turn my friends against me. And have me insulted in my own pub, in front of my own customers. Well, you know what you can do then, don't you? Go and live somewhere else. Oh, you're still up. Sam Silk, it's not that late, love. I've, uh, I've got a little surprise for you. Oh? What are you doing with that? It's a greyhound. I know what it is, but what are you doing with it? <laughs> Don! <laughs> well, that's a love. It's mine. Yours? It's a long story. Make it short and very quick. Well, you know I was running Harry Slinger to the dog track? Yes. Well, afterwards, he couldn't pay his fare. So he paid me the dog in low. A greyhound? Well, of course it's a greyhound. Well, it would have to be. If anybody was going to give you a dog done, it'd have to be a greyhound. There's something burning. I can smell something. Oh, it's me. I've had the grill on doing these sausages. Don! They were for his tea, them sausages. Yeah, well, she was hungry, love. I mean, you can't let the dog starve, can you? There was no dog meat. There was no else that would suit, so I thought, well, it's only a bit of sausage, isn't it? It's got to go, Don. And oh, come on, Ivy, love. I mean, have an heart. It's a nice dog, I mean. Look at that. Don, I've got nothing against the dog. Not as such. 
It's the gambling that worries me. No, I don't want her for gambling. Well, what you bought her for, then? Look, I didn't buy her. We had all this last night, look. The fella couldn't pay his fare. He'd lost all his cash, you see, so... Yes, on that, I expect. Well, I dare say. But look, Ivy, it was a 30-mile fare. We're not talking about a couple of quid. So, anyway, they gave me the dog, you see? Pedigree, registration papers, the lot. I mean, what else could I do? I'll tell you what you can do. You can get shut of it. Look, Ivy, we can race her. We can have a lot of fun. Don, I'm going to work now. I'll see you at dinner. Without the dog, that dog has got to go. She don't mean it. She'll like you once she gets to know you. Come on, lass, get that sausage down you. You see, a bark is a lot worse than a bite. Now, you ought to understand that. Morning, Betty. <sighs> Hello, lovey. <laughs> oh, hey. Any sound about this morning? She's not been in here. Uh, Mind you, I've only been in about ten minutes myself. Mm. He's about, though. <laughs> We're faced like a wet weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's beyond all reason, is this? I mean, it ain't the fell out before, but this time. You know, I can't stand jealous men. I used to go out with this lad called Lionel. Mm. Lionel Duffy. Insanely jealous and convinced that I were meeting somebody else. Mind you, the things he did. Such as what? Well, he used to follow me. You know, I'd be stood waiting for the bus, and he'd be peeping round corner. And when I got on the bus, he used to follow me on his bike. Oh, you damn Yeah. Couldn't reason with him, though. I went to pictures one night to see that fatal attraction. Ooh. He followed me in, shouting and yelling. My God, he were embarrassing. Well, it must have been. Anyway, his brother gave him a right good hiding after. His brother? Yeah. Well, it were his brother I were at pictures with, you say? Yes. <clears throat> Morning, love. Morning, Betty. Uh, what are you cooking for the bar lunches today? Hot pot? Well, if that suits, yes. Oh, it's as good as anything. Um, will Bet be behind the bar today? Or... No, Bet will not be behind the bar today or any other day. How do you mean? Look, how many more times do I have to tell you, Betty? Bet no longer works here. That's simple enough, isn't it? She has no further function in the running of this pub. Oh, isn't it awful? I mean, whatever you do is not right. I mean, normally speaking, at this time, we'd go in the house there and make a nice yeah. pot of tea, wouldn't yeah. we? I'd sooner go in a lion's cage. Oh, so you're still here, are you? Pardon? Did you speak? You heard. I want you to pack your bags and gone by now. This is my home. I happen to live here. Home? Oh, is that what you call it? A home? Used to be a home before you brought your fancy fella back here while my back were turned. Alec, I am sick of telling you. Nothing happened between me and Paul Rigby. Oh, play another record. Can't fool me, you can't fool Stella Rigby either. So it's a waste of time telling lies and pretending butter wouldn't melt in your mouth. You can please yourself what you think and so can Stella. And I'll thank you to buy your own newspaper in future. Do you know you're dead childish, you, aren't you? It's been a right eye-opener to me, as this. Why are you hanging on here, eh? You know it's painful for me, it's probably painful for you too. It'd be better off all round if you moved out. You must think I came floating up the river on a punnet of strawberries. This is my home. This is where I live. You can say what you like and you can do what you like, but you're not getting me out of it. Thank you. Here we are. Uh, coffee and toast, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. You're, uh, you're still running the recorder, aren't you? Uh, touch wood, yes. Uh, some people say it runs me. <laughs> well, I was wondering, if, uh, if I turn this place into a posh restaurant, you know, all upmarket, uh, would you do a piece about it? Oh, is that what you're planning to do? Well, I wouldn't say it was exactly a plan, but it's, uh, it's what I'd like to do, uh, yes. Well, it's a pity, in my opinion. There's enough posh restaurants around, not enough places that make good toast like this. <laughs> it's not us, love, it's Lady Muck. <laughs> Put all our prices. I know, but for she pay for a cup of tea. I tell you what, soon as you're not early, she'll treat him for you. Aye, I think I could run to 20p for our Martin. <laughs> what? That's on us. It's our girls. And uh, when I get a decent job, I'll take you both out on the sign. How's that? Hey, all right. we'll hold you to that, won't we, Phyllis? I'll write it down. You sign it. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Oh, okay, care, <clears throat> That's why I'm trying to put my prices up. Discouraging is so. I should think he gets enough discouragement as it is, Alma. Anyway, he's a nice lad. Well, you know he is. He used to work for Oh, I know he's a nice lad, but he'll sit there for a good half hour with that cup of tea. And we're trying to run a business, Gail. Not a tramp's refuge. Yes, well, a good few of our customers have already left since you put the prices up. 
And they're our bread and butter. Yes, but we're trying to take this place up a peg or two, aren't we? I mean, that way we'll get a bit of jam on our bread and all. I still don't see how pushing out the old customers does that. Oh, dear, you know, I really do not know how I managed to run this business while you were taking time off. It's an open love. It can't win. Hello. Hello. Is this the only dog food you've got? Eh? What are you buying dog food for? You're not in the dog house with Ivy, are you? Oh, yeah, very good, <laughs> yeah. Now I've got a dog. Yeah, racing dog, Greyhound. Had his luck, it's called. I'll be running it once I've got it fit. Mm, I had a share in the ground once. Going back a few years now, though. Ah, well, you'll know then. Hey, great sport, isn't it? It's a great way to lose some money and all in my experience. Hey, look, don't talk like that when I was about. I was counting on you to help me talk around. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, how do you fancy half share in this dog of mine? Well, if I did have a share, Don, I'd want the back half, because I don't want the half that eats all the grub. <laughs> yeah, you're on form today, aren't you? Look, seriously, how do you fancy a share? Seriously, Don. No. N-O. No. Right, would you just uh, write that lot up for me, love? Yeah, sure, Mr Gilroy. Oh, Bet's got you doing all the shopping now, has she? No. Mm, pardon me for breathing. Delivering your sandwiches to Baldwin's? Yeah. Oh, but don't let Alfie see it. It breaks his heart. He thinks they should all go in the shop for the butties. <laughs> well, we've been losing customers at the moment. Alma Sedgwick's put all the prices up and two firms have cancelled this week. Oh, well, that's something I can tell Alfie. It'll make his day. <laughs> oh, well, listen, I'd best be off or else she'll be shouting at me for dawdling. Oh, can read her like a book, that Alma. Her sort don't like work. They just like to find a chapel and it all for them. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> see ya, love. By the heck, he knows how to charge that fella of yours. At least Dick Turpin wore a mask. Oh, come on, Alec. It's that long since you've done any shopping. That's your trouble. It's about time that Bet made you do a bit. Bet's making me do nothing. The days are gone when I had any interest in what she had to say. Oh, Tina. Yes, I'll be with you as soon as I can. I've been yes. standing here for about five minutes. Bet your large scotch when you got a minute. Listen, I can't see you. I've got my lunches to do. I tell you what, strap a brush on my backside and I'll sweep the floor while I'm walking round. Hey, I'll let... This place gets worse. Do you know that? Thank you. Go. Well, you know why I do it, yeah? Trouble behind the scenes. Oh, well, what trouble's that? Well, that car chat's all me in complete confidence. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Which yeah, is yeah. why I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Stump, stump, stump. Don't them go. Well, she's been at it, hasn't she? Playing away while I were abroad and he came back and caught her at it. Well, if people can't take a joke, they shouldn't get married. How's Curly getting on there with all mad up with? He's living off the fat of the land, isn't he? I mean, he's got the freedom of his own can opener and as much bread as he can eat. <laughs> Do you know, he's landed on his feet there, really, hasn't he? I mean, he gets fed, he gets his washing done. I bet he's not paying him much, is he? He's better off there than he was in the flat. Yeah, I know, but can't take any women back, can he? I mean, that's what I miss, living at home. You don't know any girls, you, except me. Yeah, well, and while we're on the subject, if I give me dad a couple of quid to take me man to the pictures, how no. do you... Oh. Right. Ah, the relief of my figure. Lord <laughs> Scotch and whatever the other one. Ah, oh. oh, Tom, it's about in the lager. I'm sorry to keep you, but you can see how I'm fixed. But where's Bet and Alec? I don't know about Bet, but last time I saw Alec, he was in the kitchen doing himself a fry-up. Oh, cooking his own grub, bad sign, that is. Yeah, I feel sorry for people that are always falling out, you know. Couples. I mean, look at me now, Jack. I suppose we're lucky, really. And then there's Ivy, after all she's been doing now, Bet. Now what? Gone's on the gambling again. Oh, no, I thought I'd cured him of that. Came home with her grand last night. I've got to live there. But we all know where that's going to lead. Oh. You're still here, are you? Don? Are you at home? Trust him. Come on, you get off that sofa. Come on. Let's... No! <laughs> You've done this, haven't you? You've done... Come on, you. Let's have you outside, get you in that yard. Out. Oh, 
Sorry, love. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, love. Look, uh, a fair, fair came up, uh, run to the airport. You didn't mind my dinner, did you? I did not. Look at this. Oh, blimey. <laughs> did the dog do that? No, Don, it was me. I felt like a quick snack. Of course the dog did it! Well, the naughty little. Hey, Lockie, come here. <laughs> you see, they don't like being left on their own, you see. Asking for attention, that's Don! what Don! That sofa's ruined! Oh, don't worry about that, love. I've got a pal in the trade will cover that. Here, Lockie, where are you, lass? She's in the yard. Oh, Ivy! Don't you owe Ivy me! Look, Don, that dog has got to go. I'm going to work now, and when I get back tonight, I want it gone. I don't care what you do with it, but I'm telling you now, that dog's definitely got to go. Lucky? Where's that naughty girl? Lucky? Lucky! Come on, girl! Well, love, you're quite a stranger. I haven't seen you lately. I've been confined to the house with my chest. No, never. I have. Wheezing and spluttering, nobody's been near me. I've hardly set eyes on a living soul. You should have told me, love, I'd have come round. How could I tell you? I didn't dare set foot outside the house. Oh, goose grease, that's what you want, but you can't get it now, can you? No. And it's not all that effective, neither, when you can't get any. Oh. Look at it. I mean, there's more staff than customers. It's always quiet round about this time. Yes, well, that doesn't make me feel any happier. And look at Phyllis. I mean, what's she supposed to be doing? Sam's an old customer. Oh, yes, another cup of tea and spin it out for an hour brigade by the looks of things. You know, I don't employ Phyllis as some sort of hostess. Phyllis! <laughs> Look, I might as well tell you all right now, we're all going to have to tighten our belts a bit. Now, you two, you'll be going on part-time. Well, at least for now. Uh, Christine, you'll be doing the mornings, and I think Phyllis will try you from 11 till 3. That's the busy time. Well, hang on a minute, Alma. You're cutting their hours in half. Yes, I know that. I mean, I don't like having to do it. I don't suppose the girls like it either. No, we don't. No, but it's me that has to find the wages, isn't it? I mean, we're overstaffed. There's me, Gail, and you two. I mean, we haven't got the trade to cover it. Yes, but you're counting yourself there, Alma, aren't you? I mean, you're hardly full-time, are you? You just pop in for the odd hour here and there. Now, I think if we go back to the old prices... Gail, don't tell me how to try and run my business, please. Right. I won't. You can start doing your sums again, Alma, because I'm leaving. Maybe you will need Phyllis and Christine full-time, because you won't have me. So are, you are you sure you know what you're doing? Quite sure. Sort me money out. I'll call in for it tomorrow. Excuse me. I'd like some sugar in my tea if it's not too much to ask. There's no clean shirts in my drawer. Do you hear me? There isn't a clean shirt in my drawer. There's none in the airing cupboard either. Do you know? I thought you were singing. I didn't think you were speaking to me at the moment. What are you going to do about it? Well, the washing, of course. I've nothing decent to wear. I've got that bar to run tonight. But tell me, Summit Alec, who will wash your shirts and iron them if I pack my bags and leave, which you keep telling me to do? Well, well while you're still here, living rent-free, the least you can do is pull your weight. I mean, it's not just the washing, it's the kitchen. It's a disgrace. If it were mine, I'd be ashamed. I thought it was yours. You keep telling me everything's yours. That grill pan's filthy. God knows when it was last washed. There's only you uses it. Look, if you won't take the hint and leave, while you're living here at my expense, you can do a bit. You can keep the place tidy, the odd meal or two. Make sure I've got something clean to wear, right? Wrong! That's just what she's hoping you'd do, walk out. Oh, I don't know. Well, I do. She's dead calculating that armor. I mean, she's been goading you on, hasn't she? Well, you could be right, ma'am. I don't really care. The job was getting impossible. Well, that place won't be the same without you, love. No. Take it from me. Well, it's very nice of you to say so, Alf. 
But nobody's indispensable, are they? No, it'll just stagger on the way it has been doing for years. Not if she keeps on banging the price up the way she has. I'll tell you something. My butty sales are going up again. Look, never mind your butty sales. Do you know what narks me? I'm sure you'll tell us when you're ready. Ivy. Ivy? How come? Well, she's always wanted you to give up this job, hasn't she? Huh? Wait till she hears this. Oh, I can just see that smile creeping over that smug little face. Evening. Mrs. Brennan, then? Uh, well, no, uh, but he can't be far away. His car's there. My name's Harry Slinger. Your husband's got a dog of mine. Greyhound. Oh. Oh, you're the one, I Oh, would you please come in? He was driving me yesterday, uh, and I had the dog with me. Well, I was racing her, actually. And, well, to cut a long story short, and I'd had one or two... Uh, yes, I've truth. heard all about this from the husband, uh, Don, so you don't need to tell me. Excuse me. See that? Your dog did that. Oh, I should chew through anything. <laughs> I'll sort it out, love. That's why I'm here, to settle with your husband. I mean, the dog's no good to him now, is it? Uh, well, no, not in my opinion, no. Where is the dog now? Isn't, isn't she here? Uh, uh, well, uh, no, you, you'll have to have a word with my husband. Um, he, he'll have took it out. How long's he going to be? Uh, I couldn't tell you, but, uh, like I say, his car's there, so uh, he can't be far away. <laughs> Hi, Oh, this is it, is it? Been at exercising, have you? No, the damn thing's been exercising me. The guy out of our backyard, I've been chasing it all around Witherfield. Well, there, that doesn't sound so good, does it, Don? I mean, if your ground runs away, you shouldn't be able to catch it, should you? Oh, you <laughs> Right, Mr. Ritzlinger, I'll tell him you see him in the pub, OK? Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute, he's here now. Ah, uh, Mr. Brennan, I'm glad to call you. I've come to pay you that money I owe you. You don't owe me anything. You're fair from yesterday. No, you paid for that with this dog. Oh, now, come on. That's why I'm here. I want my dog back. Look, I'll give you the money I owe you and I'll throw in a few quid on top of that for your trouble. Oh, come on. Fair deals, Dan. I mean, dogs no good to us. No, no. A deal's a deal. I took the dog in good faith. Look, it was your idea, mate, not mine. No, I'll stick to the bargain. How much are you after? Look, put your money away. It's not your money I'm after. Right, love. She's hungry. And so am I. You've not heard the last of this. I'll be back. You'll be wasting your time, mate, and mine. Don't you playing at? Cheers, thanks. Uh, thanks so much. Anyway, Agley, I told her what she could do with a job. Uh, well, that cafe won't be the same without her. Should we go and sit down? Large scotch, please, innkeeper. Right. Haven't seen Bet behind the bar recently. Not ill, is she? No, she's not, unfortunately. Oh, hello, hello, hello. So it's true what they're saying, then? Why, what have you heard? Well, I am said, oh, Mr. Gilroy, I don't know how, so how could I? Our Jack said no to me. About what? Eh? Your Jack said nothing to you about what? Well, I, I keep like... stomach out you, Vera. You're digging Jack's grave with your teeth. Yeah. <coughs> Just seen that ground of Don Brennan's you were on about. Yeah. Uh, hello. What do you want, pint? Oh, very best respects, I'm sure. Pint for half, please. I'm just saying to Vera, I've seen that ground of Don Brennan's. A bloke was trying to get him to sell it back to him. Oh, is Don selling it then? Nope. Well, it's a mug, it's Don. Well, I don't know. Look, the class grounds are he could be a winner. That's probably why he wants it back. You know what you're like once you get gambling. I didn't expect that from you, Ivy. Throwing that in my face. I'm not throwing it in your face. Well, if I am, it's because you've made Look, me. Look, I don't want the dog for gambling on. Cross me heart. Look, I want to race it, yes, but that's not the same. But you don't know anything about training greyhounds. Well, I know a bit. I know this much. The dog has got to feel that it's wanted. Well, it's not. Not by me, any road. There you go, you see. She, she knows what you're talking about. They're intelligent, you know. Look, Ivy, I've just got a feeling about this dog. Now, give it a go, eh? Look, and all right, this dog could be a gold mine. Chops. Come on, then. Could you give me a clue or something? Then I might just know what you're on about. You know what I mean. Where's mine? Listen, sunshine. If you think I'm cooking for you, you've got another thing coming. If you think I'm going to wash your socks and iron your shirts, 
After what you've said to me, you want separate lives, you've got separate lives. Because you've been treating me like I was something you'd stepped in on the pavement. I'm going to do nothing for you. Nothing. Oh, oh, you're not, are you not? No, I'm not. Right. Right, then. If you want to play it rough, fair enough. You started it, love, not me. Uh, well, you'll find I can be just as awkward as you, eh? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes. I, uh, if, if you're not going to pull your weight, I'll find somebody who will. I'll get the housekeeper in. You'll do what? You heard. I'll have to pay a woman to do your job. Uh, yes, she can live in and she can cook and do the washing and cleaning. Uh, that's what I'll do. I'll get the housekeeper in. You do. Oh, I will. Don't you worry. I will. Oh, hi. Hi. Got that early. Bed bugs biting well, are they? Bed? Oh, no, no. I like to be up sharpish, you know. It's my only chance to get an early breakfast. Well, any breakfast come to that. Yeah, is Jack up? Uh, well, he was, but only to uh, dose himself and bombard me with germs. Yeah. He reckons he's got flu. I mean, flu about, and I've got exams. <laughs> I see yeah. you. I see you, lucky. Hey, Al, come on, look. How do you think she's looking then? Ah! Oh, hey! Champion. Yeah. She's running tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Entered official the lot. You see, the bloke who used to own it fixed it. So I thought, well, why not? Anyway, look, there's still an half share on offer. Do yourself a favour, grab it while you can. Once she's a winner, well, there'll be a queue, won't there? Oh, I don't know. You lose a lot of money on dogs, you know. Yeah, and there's a lot of fortunes being made and all. Well, anyway, look, the offer's there, Alf. I'd like a partner, and you're in with first shout. OK, I can't say fair than that, can I? Blooming heck, talk about early birds. Is this going to be a regular happening? Oh, when she's running, love, yes. I mean, a greyhound's like a machine, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> a racing machine. She's got to be tuned to perfection. I see, and three times round red wreck twice a week, that'll do it, will it? Oh, that's just for a start. I've got to work out a programme. Yes, and you'll be a slave to it. Don't forget you've got work to do. Have you got no bookings for today? Oh, no, I've made arrangements. Just when I see Lucky through a first race. You... You mean you've already fixed a race for her? Uh, well, all red tape sorted, love. I'm now an officially registered owner, so there's no reason why I shouldn't race her. And, well, the long and the short is, she's running tomorrow. Oh, I hey. love, eh? Did you hear that? So what's your next bombshell, then, eh? Sell your taxi and back her with proceeds. Oh, come on, love. She must be worth a quid or two. I'll back her each way. A tenner at the most. Which is no more than you blow up bingo. Hey, what are you feeding her there? It's only left of us, cottage pie and that from last night. Cottage pie? <laughs> you don't feed a greyhound cottage pie. You might as well run it in clogs. Get away with your bother, she'll lap it up. Hey, come on down and eat your breakfast. I must have clean shirts. You cannot live under my roof and deny me clean shirts. You know where the iron is. Look, I feel like a tramp. Now, do us a shirt. I mean, we can be civilised, can't we? Civilised? Listen, who's talking? I have been a gentleman. Now, get some shirts pressed sat there on your backside. And what are you doing with your coat on? Well, I've got some shopping. <laughs> shopping? What shopping? I've never told you to do any shopping. Good heavens, woman, we've got Jack on the sky. It's stuff I want. You do your own shopping. I don't put my nose out. I mean, you might have the locks changed. You might get that flaming housekeeper in that you've been threatening me with queen in it. I'm not threatened. You have simply warned you of the consequences of your unreasonable behaviour. It's a threat to get me to toe the line, to get me back skivvying for you. Well, get your precious housekeeper in. They'll be fighting to wash your sweaty socks, I don't think. She does her own shopping, right? Lovely. Take note, Betty. This is going to sound great in court. Look, I'll get off to the shops. I'll see you two later. Try not to scalp one another in the meantime. Oh, your gallop's going to be well and truly stopped, lady. You think you've got ammunition? Well, you're going to find out. Am I? Yes. I want some breakfast. I feel like death. I'm starving and I've no shirt. There's always the river. It's all going in the statement, is this? There is only one statement needed, Alec, and you know what that is. That I'm wrong. That you and Paul simply sat together there singing hymns. Well, you can stuff that. You're a wally, Alec. You're a right wally. Put that in your statement and chew on it. No, I'm, I'm afraid Mrs Tillsley has left us. Oh, yes, yes, you were very efficient, yes. But unfortunately, her domestic commitments had become rather a priority. Excuse me, excuse me, you do, um... You, you, you do have a sandwich order, do you? No. <laughs> no. 
No, no, this is not Christine either. No, this is Mrs. Sedgwick, the owner. Mm, what a performance. People think they've got through to Buckingham Palace. She'd win prizes for a phone voice. I am. She's a good second voice, I know. Oh, we're all right. In fact, I'd say we're better off. I mean, what with Gail gone, we're short-handed, really. Well, I don't trust her. Never know what she's up to. Honestly, do we not for bodies and give you half your flipping life oh, story? Oh, I know there are some pests, man. <laughs> you were grand. If you don't mind me saying so, you've got a very nice way with you on the phone, Mrs Sedgwick. But what's all this missus? I mean, we're a gang now. I mean, it's Alma, OK? Oh, grand. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, dear, not of Gail's fans, I suppose. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello, uh, Jim's Cafe, Mr Sedgwick speaking. Ah, Mr Sneed! He's what? Can he do that? Oh, you bet I'd like to discuss it. Listen, listen, I, I, I'll be around, I'll, I'll be around in half an hour, right? That's why, my God, ex-husband. I could give Scrooge lessons. Oh, um, that, uh, that was my solicitor on the phone. I've just got to dash out, but um, uh, I'm sure you two can cope now we're a team. Well, as long as you're back before 12, I mean, I've got to be off on my butty round. Oh, don't panic, sweetie. Amid all my personal troubles, I shall make sure that my valuable and willing staff are in no way inconvenienced. Well, that's fine, then. <laughs> Make that two hours. Yes, well, I'm afraid I've got no choice as it happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but if you could just keep the skiving within limits. Right, well, I'd best get me wall paint on. <laughs> Grand, fine. <laughs> Leave it to us. Mm, right pair of creeps, aren't we? Oh, Christmas, I don't fancy much more of this. Be warned, he'll have you changing barrels next. What, down that mucky cellar? Ah, good girl, you've got the mixers from the yard. Uh, now, look, I was just thinking, Tina, with Jack being off, here's a good chance for you to learn about the barrels. Aye, barrels, uh, plus broken fingernails, bruised knuckles and squashed toes. Look, a big girl like you should be no trouble at all. I mean, why should cellar work be a masculine preserve? Is that some sort of marmalade? I'm not having cellar, Mr Gilroy. I went down there once and got cobwebs in my air. Well, then I'll find you a hat. And when them giant rats get, you'll be passing it round. Yeah, look, ignore the flack. I'll make it worth your while, Tina, believe me. I'm sorry, Mr Gilroy, but I'm not mulling with barrels. Stick to your guns, Petal. Never trust a fella that sleeps in his shirt. Would you tell your shop steward that this bar is out of bounds to unauthorised personnel until them doors are open? And would you tell your boss he knows what he can do with his bar? And if you take my advice, Chuck, you'll tell him where he can put his barrels and all. I am eager to learn all aspects at trade, but I'm not going down that cellar with them spiders. Oh, forget it. I'll do the barrels myself. But if I mess my shirt up, I'll want a new one. Wash it and iron it. Mm, that's not in my contract of employment either. Well, I must say he looks in good form, isn't he? I'll say that. What's his name, by the way? Her name. Harry's Luck. Lucky for short. Aye. Oh, lucky by name, lucky by nature. Hey, be open. She's got some form, this little belter, you know. What? Good parentage, you know. I checked it out. Oh, aye. I suppose her great great grandfather was Mick the Miller. Look, I'm telling you straight up, you're looking at a class animal oh, here. Oh, who's a clever girl? <laughs> Hey, yeah, look at them legs. I bet you can run, can't you, Chuck? Come on, have a biscuit. Hey, no, don't give her any of that, much. It's only a chocolate cream. Come on, will she no, sit for it? Seriously, look, she's racing tomorrow. I want her at a racing weight, not all stodged up. Tomorrow, where? Vault. Oh. I've entered her, paid the three quid. But she's not when you think of the prize money. It's your prize money. Oh, well, yeah, no danger. Plus a few bob on the side, like. Oh, Alfie, why don't we trot along and have a look? It'll be a good night, oh, I've been trying to persuade him to come in with me. Hey. You'd be the owner's wife, treated like royalty. He's not said no. Well, well the duck will slow his bite, Alf. Oh, blow them, I fancy. Come on, Alf, it don't be a spot spot. Oh, it costs money, you know. Oh, brass, you've got tucked away. You could run 20 dogs. All right, say no more. Right, I'm on. Oh, <laughs> oh, who's going to be a champion then? Hey, what do they wear at these dog tracks? What, the dogs? No, the owners, oh, wives. Uh, wellies and, and anoraks and things. I mean, uh, oh. they don't get dressed up, do they, Don? Uh, do you think that's all the orders for now? Oh, thank heaven. She's no I'm puffed out. Will you manage? I mean, I've, I've got to be off on my butty round and I'm late already. Well, it's going to be dicey if Madam doesn't show up. Solicitor. Bet it were a flaming hairdresser on the phone. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, you're soon back. Oh, sorry to spoil your little holiday, I am sure. Holiday? We've not stopped. Doing what you paid for, Petal. Oh, my heart bleeds for you. Shall Christine do it, Sam is? She can do the splits for all I care. Dear Mother, it's a madhouse. You know, she's more moods than I've had fellas. Where did you get that shirt? Where did you get that shirt? Come on, Ali, go. <laughs> Don't be shy. Where did you get it from? Oh, bizarre in Cairo, were it? Give me that. That's an Hawaiian <laughs> shirt, you clammy. Why? Oh, what well, it all free off for, like? You know, did you get a free set of bongos and underpants to match? Just, just pull a pint and chuck it over him, will you? Well, you do look a bit weird. And whose fault's that? Tina. Tina, is this the policy now, this Hawaiian bit? Uh, has he issued you with a grass game? Go easy girls, cos he could snap just like that. Ooh. There you are, girls. Oh, 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 hey, Doc. Hey, Thanks, why is Alec wearing that damn shirt? Well, he's got nothing else clean. He's ruined his other one doing the cellar work. Are you not doing his laundry, then? Not a sock, not a hanky. Mind you, they were pathetic. I watched him this morning. I nearly snatched the iron off him and said, come here, you daft devil. Well, why didn't you? Why should I? If he hey. wants to act like a big soft kid, well, you're walking a very fine line. It won't be nice if he does get this housekeeper in. Oh, it's too mean. They don't come cheap, do housekeepers. Anyway, it's no sweat being a lady of leisure, don't you agree? It's just my day off. Oh, it won't go on for much longer. The daft day, but will soon come to his senses. Ah. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I think you're both being a bit silly. Oi! Steady on, my bit. I didn't start it, it's him. What he wants is me, on my knees, confessing to Summit I never did. If I give in, make the rest of my life a misery. Half a bit of landlord, please. Good heavens, man, what's that you've got on? Are you in a fun run this of it? It's a shirt, as any half-wit can see. A shirt? It's more fit for a circus, that monstrosity, than a reputable pub. It's one of the brewery don't have rules. Where are you going when I'm talking to you? Hey, he's on a short fuse today. Yeah, he's a bit shirty. <laughs> Very funny, but civility costs nout. Uh, oh, hiya, Bay. Hi, Bay. One of the eye for now, eh? How does it be? Well, I've not started scratching yet, Vera. Uh, Same again, love. Right. I, I Jack reckons that you're on strike like at regards to housekeeping. Could say that. There has been talk about housekeeping being fetched in. Oh, hey, that'd be a right sure. smack it go for you, eh? <laughs> That's where you're wrong, Vera. Now it's so trivial to be war. Home care agency. Uh, y yes, you can. Yes, I need a housekeeper uh, rather quickly. Uh, well, well, this afternoon, actually, it's a bit of an emergency. Within the hour, if possible. <laughs> Not met Lucky, have you? No. Yeah. What do you reckon, eh? Well, eh? she's certainly <laughs> all greyhound, isn't she? Not that I'm that keen on greyhounds, you know, oh, the way they look. Give her, but she's beautiful. Yeah. Built for speed. Yeah. Hiya, sweetheart. Hey, look. I hope she's all right with kids. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. She wouldn't hurt her lap. Yeah. Do you want to give her a little polish? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you With the brush. With the brush. <laughs> I've just been round Alf's. <laughs> My mum says that uh, Alf and her have a part share in it. Yeah, yeah, we shook hands on it. Well, I suppose they are costly. Yeah. Well, it's not that so much, really. It's just the, the training. See, they've got to have regular exercise. Yeah, and I mean exercise, not just to walk in the park. They've got to be run to plan, you see. Yeah. Does Alf know that? Yeah. Well, if he doesn't, he's going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Madam's had some bad news. Something to do with her alimony, from what we can gather. And we're catching fallout. High time, I say. Haven't your bosses got a priorities right? Customers first, staff second. By heck. You change like the wind, don't you? Just because you've got sex appeal, you can't say just what you want, you know. Is there is there some trouble here, Mrs. Pierce? Uh, some complaint from this gentleman? Or, uh, or do you think I'm running a rest home? That's the ticket. Showman's got the stripes. He called me over this pest. He said his uh, Edelscape was stale. Stale? Well, if it's stale, it must be changed, mustn't it? I said no, she's demented. Ah, uh, Christine, a fresh Eccles cake, if you please. Pardon? We have Egon Roney on the premises. Haven't you recognised him? Look, the cake is perfectly satisfactory. Yeah, well, you just said it was stale. 
Well, if that's stale, they're all stale. It's... Anyway, he's not touched it. It's her acting the ghost. Oh, I see. It's my stuff now, is it? Now, look. You're going a bit overboard, here. Overboard? Me? That's rich. Do you, know, do you know what I think? I think you're the type that just comes in here inventing complaints. In this day and age, there's no invention needed. Right. You've moaned about the Eccles cake, you've moaned about the staff, and you were in here moaning last week. Are you on tablets? No, I am on my feet, and I have been on my feet since dawn, but don't mind me, I'm just here to be got at. Uh, how about your tea? I mean, you haven't moaned about that yet. I mean, you do intend drinking it, don't you? Or are you just going to sit there and nurse it for a couple of years? In law, there's no time limit. Well, I am the law in this cafe, and I say there is, and it has expired. This cafe is closed. Don't be daft, it's not four o'clock. Nevertheless, I have had enough, and I am closing. Clear them out! But it's raining. Don't argue, just shut the place. Well, what shall I tell them? Well, you can tell them the morgue is open for business, but this place is closed. Closed, closed, closed. Yes, well, uh, this seemed to be satisfactory, Mrs Hargreaves. Uh, very flattering, in fact. Happen, but then I have been at it for ten years. I take it you are a chap on your own, Mr Gilroy. Er, uh, well, not exactly, no. Only I don't want to pry, but if you did have a family, I might find that rather difficult. Oh, oh no, no, no. There's just me and, and the uh, and the wife. Oh, good. That I can cope with. Hmm. Yeah. I reckon she works, does she? Oh, well, well, she's aiming to, you know, between jobs at the moment, you know. Not one of nature's home bodies, the wife. I see. So it's basically cleaning and ironing, then, is it? Uh, yes. Right, then, about me rate. Oh, well, naturally, I'd base that on what I pay the cleaners. Cleaners? Oh, no, Mr Gilroy. I mean, do you pay an oil rag the same rate as you do a motor mechanic? Uh, well, well, what I meant to say, of course, was that I'd uh, negotiate from that Oh, base. there's no room for negotiation, Mr Gilroy. My rate is set by the agency, and I warn you, it's the top rate. Yes. Well, I suppose you get what you pay for. Oh, you do indeed. Uh, can I take it with suited, then? Uh, I think so, yes. Right. I'll see you first thing in the morning, uh, Well, just a, just a moment. I, wa I was hoping that you might be able to start, like, straight away. I'm a bit pushed for shirts, only I... Uh, I normally only wear these on holiday. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were in a band or something. Right, then, I'll do you a couple of hours. Mind you, it'll be time and a half, being yes. such short notice. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Say, Alf. Ah, she's ready when you are. I beg your pardon? Fluffy, she's ready for a run if you want to nip round. On oh, no, I didn't want to bring her in the shop, like, you know. Oh, what's all this about? Oh, it's me greyhound. Well, our greyhound. And she's ready for her exercise. Yeah, hang on a minute. Uh, look, you don't expect me to take time off. Well, I've taken her out twice today, haven't I? I mean, I thought... I thought we were going to take it in terms. Yeah, well, I've got a business to run, you know. I'm I... a greyhound <sighs> now, it seems. Salah. I've seen the most beautiful pair of the most marvellous green summer boots up in the precinct. Hello, Don. Mm. They're canvas, knee length, but they've got lovely little buttons all up the sides. Oh, oh am I interrupting summer? Oh, well, apparently, Audrey, it's your greyhound. It needs exercising. Oh. Well, I thought half would fancy it, but look, if you can't manage it, I'll have to do it myself. And it's not every day, you know, it's, it's just pre-race. Like. Yeah, but I'm a bit, you know, tied up. Hang on, hang on, no problem. If uh, Lucky needs exercising, I'll take her. In fact, I could take her up to the precinct, see what she looks like with those boots are spotted. <gasps> and I saw this wonderful pair of grey clothes. Oh, hey, hang on a in minute. That no, uh, oh. This dog will need more than a trot around the shops, though, won't he, Don? Well, I hope it's better than a fretted indoors. Yeah, right, well, look, you go ahead and I'll, I'll catch up in a minute. Right, room. I'll have her ready and ready to go. Spoiled, spoiled. Look, you don't need new boots or skirts. Me neither. Oh, be fair. Am I getting a new outfit. Well, you could get yourself a ratting hat and one of them sticks you sit up. Mind the fort. Oh, well, don't strain out. Honestly, Sally. Men, they just don't understand, do they? I've got absolutely nothing that goes with that dog's colour. Well, never mind. You can always die lucky to match. Can't they read? Get lost. How are you? Wherever you're lurking, Diamond Lil's back at the ranch. If you're hiding your mummy, be warned. Hello. What's going on? Who the blue blazes are you? I'm Mrs. Hargreaves. I'm the new housekeeper. 
don't say. Isn't life full of surprises? You're Mrs. Skilroy, I suppose. For the moment, love. But I'm working on it. What happened? Did Aladdin rub his magic lamp or what? Mr. Gilroy phoned the agency and I happened to be available. So now you're here. Doing His Majesty's laundry, I see. Do you know that's my iron? I beg your pardon. <laughs> Oi! You! You've got a nerve, haven't you? Getting your bits of crackling in here and letting them run riot with my belongings. Oh, sense, woman, what belongings? That's my iron. It damn well isn't. And nor is Mrs. Hargreaves my bit of crackling. I should think not. She's a respectable lady I've been forced to employ as a housekeeper. Well, whatever she is, that's still my iron. It damn well isn't. It was a wedding present. It was not. I had that on HP long before I was fool enough to wed you. Uh, look, Mrs. Hargreaves, all this can be sorted, love. Uh, would you perhaps just go into the kitchen? Eh? Oh, no. I'm not having her in that, my kitchen. Get your hands off my iron. Uh, uh, what? Well, that is conjugal property. It's mine as much as yours. Give me that blasted thing, will well, you? Well, have it, then. Like everything else. Uh, perhaps we could go to the bedroom, Mrs. <gasps> Hargreaves. Bedroom, eh? Can't even wait till I'm out of the room. Watch him, love. He's only got one thing on his mind, this fellow. Uh, Mrs. Hargreaves, all I am suggesting is we take the ironing board, etc., up to the bedroom so you can get on. Do not let him get you in the bedroom, love. Won't be a nice experience. Take no notice of her. She's mad. It's all an act. I can see that. I've met some in my time, but really. Uh, well, don't worry about it. I'll have it all sorted out for you tomorrow, Mrs. Hargreaves. You'll have no more interference of this kind, I can assure you. Uh, see, your little stunt hasn't worked, has it? She's stopping, even if I have to pay her double money. Go on, then. Be an idiot. Ruin yourself. See if I care. I'm talking to you. I'm just saying that when it comes to moving fast, it's going to have to be a good ground to keep up with you. Do you know? That's my middle name. Lightning. You've got a ah. racing dog, you've got a partner, and an ownership certificate, and all within one week. Yeah, that's some good fun. That plain poker was having got fun. Look, love, I'm in with Alf Roberts on this. Now, does he chuck his brass about? Well, here's to you. Next one's on me. Not that I'm stopping. I'm on my way to a meeting. Planning and general purposes. They go on for hours. Actually, I'll laugh it all. How was, uh, how's our treating you nowadays? Oh, going down the pan at the usual rate. Hey, is it true the Gazette's starting a giveaway sheet? Oh, there are rumours. In fact, Ken reckons they're more than just rumours. Worrying for him. Yeah. I've left him at home with Sibelius. <laughs> That's music, not the lodger. <laughs> he can switch off, can Ken? Yeah, well, I'm learning to switch off. A couple of stiff drinks and a tape of Dean Martin. Dean Martin? And see that Yanker used to take Dickie Valentine? Oh, cheers, thanks a lot, <laughs> OK, love. Where's Alec? Betty and Tim. Jack's off sick of them all on me Todd. How to do with me, Chuck? Hey, what's this? Abandoned ship or something? Oh, it's all right. You're all right. I'll only be five minutes. I've got a client that needs sorted. He's got a booking in Accrington. I am not running this pub on my own on my wages. Look. Mr Gilroy, I'm off now. Can I have my money, please? Fifteen pounds, we agreed. Well, well can't, can't it wait until tomorrow, Mrs Hargreaves? Uh, hey, you don't do bar work, do you? How do you fancy a couple of hours? It'd be worth an extra tenner to you. You know, free taxi home and as much as you can sell. Mr Gilroy, I am temperance. Now, could I have the money, please? Hello. Had his wicked way with you, and now he's trying to dick me as well, is he? Well, you just ask parrot who's rattling her cage. Mrs. Hargreaves, I do need a woman I, ca I can trust. Can we discuss it? Come into the office a moment. Hey, what's to do? Oh, it's chaos. There's no yeah. staff. I've only one pair of hands. I've never seen such a cock up. No, no, Mr. Gilroy, no. Oh, that is sad. I am not a barmaid. No one about bulletproof. I've pressed your shirt and now I've just seen about enough. It's goodbye and that is final. Excuse me. Oh, oh, right, hey, Mr. Gilroy, does this mean you're short handed? It means we're shutting, cos I'm not sticking it on me own. Well, don't blame me. Blame her with smirk on her face. Hey, I've no plan for tonight and you don't need a union card, do you, sir? So uh, how about it? Yes, well, uh, just until I get back then, Tina, yes. Right. <laughs> Happy now, are you? <laughs> Pub wrecker. Unless you nip out for a quiet drink, is the whole world cracking up or what? No, love, just Alec. Couldn't happen to a nicer fella. <laughs> Oh, there you are, there you are. You stop there, Horton. Cheers, 
you know, I wish I knew where I was going to wear tonight. I've just got nothing that's suitable. You what? You've got a wardrobe full of stuff. She's got stuff she's never worn. Oh, give I'm just saying, Dan, I don't know what I'm going to wear tonight for this greyhound racing. Well, forecast says rain. I'd wear a raincoat. Oh, you're as bad as half, you know. He wouldn't notice if I threw a tarpaulin over me head. No, don't... You know, what, what if Lucky wins? I mean, doesn't somebody have to lead her up, like, you know, and receive a cup? <laughs> you're thinking of the Grand National. It's not like that with dogs. Well, right at the top there is, but uh, we're not quite there yet, are Look, we? don't worry about what you've got to wear. It doesn't matter. <sighs> Do you know, he'd take all the fun out of it if I let him. Now, that reminds me, would you and Kevin like to come? Oh, I can't tonight. I'm going to my keep fit class. Oh. And Kevin's working late at garage, but well, we'll come another time. Lovely. All this talk about silver cups is getting me going. What do you reckon, then? Are we going to well, be all right tonight? There's only five dogs in the race, and I'll say this for lucky, she's in good form. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, she's eating one now. That's a good sign. And out at six o'clock this morning, you know. <laughs> hey, look, as I go, look, she'll tell you. Up and out at six o'clock this morning with Lucky, wasn't I, Lucky? I'll say. You woke me up and all. Like big daft kids, you and I'll that done. Cheers, Sally. How much is that, love? Oh, hey, now, nice, Ivy, come on. You're looking forward to tonight, aren't you? Racing Lucky, I mean. Hey, now that reminds me, Alfie, how much are we putting on? I mean, we're going to have a bet. We certainly are. I mean, you ought to have a racing dog and not back it, do you? Well, yes. I mean, it's not compulsory, is it? Oh, I mean, right. them as wants a bet can have a bet, can't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, look, I better be off. Uh, Alf, uh, how about 11 o'clock for a bit of a run out there? You're on. Right, I'll see you then, then. <laughs> now, look, Don, are you going to be doing any gambling tonight or what? Look, if it's going to upset you, I won't bother. Huh. I just want to raise the dog. That's pleasure enough for me. But you have a bet. It's more of an interest. I'm not betting. Oh, look, you know what Audrey is. She'll think we're stuck for money that we can't afford it. She can think what she likes. Right, I'm off to work. Yeah, all right. Hey, look, look, stop worrying, will ya? Ooh. Come on, then, lass. Let's get off home, get some breakfast and have a little ziz. Look, uh, do more sausages at lunchtime today than you usually do, Betty. There's a lot like sausages. <laughs> I like them myself. Right. Tina was telling me that um, she had a new assistant behind the bar last night. <clears throat> oh, Vera right. Duckworth. Right. Scraping the barrel, if you ask me. I didn't ask you. Look, Betty, I, I know Vera's not the best barmaid in the world, but I've no alternative. I mean, there was no one else I could call on. I bet sat in the house doing nothing. Look, I've told you before, Betty. She's finished behind that bar. Stupid in my opinion. Well, I'm not asking for your opinion. Look, Betty, if, if you want to help me out, you can. How are you fixed for a couple of evenings a week, eh? No. Mornings and lunchtime's enough for me. More than enough for me, the way things are. <laughs> Morning, Betty, love. Morning, lovey. You and him aren't even speaking now, then? No. Swearing occasionally, that's all. Childish. You both want locking up. He's the one that's doing it. He's the one that tried bringing a housekeeper in here yesterday afternoon. He never... Oh, yes, he did. Like I say, he tried. I soon saw her off. No danger. <laughs> no, 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 Gilroy. G, G for garter, I for igloo. Yes, yes, that's right, Rover's return. Yes, you sent me one yesterday, a Mrs Hargreaves. Oh, no, 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 I was more than happy with her, more than happy. Pardon? She said that, did she? Well, well yes, yes, I know. Yes, I know people don't want threats and abuse and general unpleasantness. I'm not so fond of it myself. Well, I was thinking, like, somebody living in this time. What, well, well, nobody. Nobody at all. Yes, yes, I will try somebody else. I'll get somebody. I think I know the very woman. Hey, let you out! Right, let her go! OK. Go on, lass. Go on. Go, Charles. Go on. Go, go, go. Go to it. Go to it. Go. Oh. Here. Fetch. Go on. Fetch. Fetch. Sit. See? Go on. Get your foot. Go on. Ow. Call her, will you? You what? Show. Call for her, you. Oh, Go right. Gotcha. Yeah. Come on, then, 
Rocky! Go Come on, on, girl! Go Come on, on, girl! Come on, look! Oh, Lord. I see Mr. Noel's in again. Morning. I wasn't going to patronise this place anymore, you know, after what had been said to me, but here I am. Aren't I the lucky one? Do you know why I'm here? I'm here because I believe in helping people, even people who are difficult to help. So I've come to remind you of a very true saying. The customer is always right. Fancy, you know, I don't believe I've ever heard that before. Thank you. Is one of you two going to serve this old wind I am. Christine, how many sandwiches have you made there? They're enough to feed the 5,000. Well, I thought... Well, there's more there than we've got orders for. That I do know. I thought that I could try a couple of places that used to have sandwiches off and so I made a few extra. Well, just try where I tell you, all right? Yes. Hey, I came in here for a mid-morning coffee. Not be lunch. I'll be obliged if you get a move on. Oh, I'll just sweat you all could beggar. Hey, 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 don't talk to me. Well, it's only person. I've heard you say much worse. Look, just don't argue, Phyllis. Look, and I don't want you doing things just because you think it's a good idea, all right? You do what I tell you. That way, I can keep a track on what we're selling, how much money we're taking, all right? It's only news and not an initiative to try and help you. Look, Phyllis, would you please not find your own business while I'm trying to straighten the girl out? Yeah. Hey! This is tea. Well, what did you expect? Coffee. I ordered coffee and toast. You don't drink coffee. You always have tea. I haven't had tea since you put it up to 40p a cup. I ordered coffee. Oh, get it down, you Percy, and stop moaning. Look, will you kindly give the man what he wants? He wants his legs slapping. He's trying to be awkward. Right. Look, I have no intention of making an exhibition of myself in front of the customers by arguing with my staff. Go and get your coat on. What for? Because you're fired. Hey, come on, Mrs. Sedgwick. There's, there's no call for that. A reprimand would be quite sufficient. A reprimand and a complimentary meal would satisfy me. Look, and don't you start telling me how to run my business. I've got enough with my staff doing it. Now, come on, Phyllis, don't just stand there. Go on, I shan't change my mind. Look, you know where we're going wrong, don't you? Look, don't mess about. If you've got an idea, spit it out. Yeah, well, she's not going to run to me, is she? Because she doesn't know me, but she does know you. Well, why didn't I think of that? Right, I'll take her then, and you can shout for her. Come on then. Well, don't just stand there. Don't leave me to do all the walking. Any road. She lasted about two minutes once I'd marked her cards for her. <laughs> Mind you, he won't learn. He were on the phone again this morning, trying to get another to live in. Well, you're making a tale of you. And you have to, I suppose, but I bet it upset you, though. Rita, I was upset. But I'm past being upset. What's the point? Are you saying, you and Alec, it's finished? He wants a divorce. Do you, though? <laughs> well, if he's set on it, I've no alternative, have I? I've got to look after myself. I got a solicitor, so then he went and got a solicitor. There's no arguing with him anymore. He won't listen. What he wants is me to start weeping and begging for another chance. That's something I'll never do. Well, I'm sorry. I really am. I thought you and Alec were, well, not a match set exactly, but a good couple. Still, if it's over, as you say it is, then you've got to look after yourself. I tell you what, though, he won't be doing himself any favours if he does bring a housekeeper in. How do you mean? Well, I know they don't start sorting out who's guilty and who's innocent so much in divorce cases these days, but all the same. I mean, if he does bring a woman into the house, it's an affront to you, isn't it? Unreasonable behaviour. You'd be justified in walking out. Look bad for him in court. That's what he wants. Me, to walk out. He's told me to get out. This is my home, Rita. Well, there's always a bed at my place. Thanks, kid. Well, tell a divorce court shares everything out. I'm staying put. Come on, Dad! Come on! Run to the door! Run! 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 What time's Alec coming back, do you know? I couldn't tell you, Vera. Look at it. 
I've seen more custom in the chapel arrest. If you ask me, people don't like coming in with all this bother going on. You could be right, lover. I'm sick of it myself. Now then, what are you sick of, Betty? Oh, we're just no, saying. Don't. Not much fun working here anymore with all this trouble between you and Mr Gilroy. Not much fun for me either, though. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, Baldwin's going to murder me if I don't get back to work on time. Anyway, if you see Alec, tell him I'm ready and willing. What for? To work me out bar tonight. That's if he still wants me. Will you tell him? Well, yes, I suppose. I can't love it. Hello. Try. Must be having lunch with Ken today, but it doesn't look as if he's coming. Always on the go, aren't you, you and Ken? Oh, you're not kidding. I've got a committee meeting this afternoon. Hey, if you hear of any good little jobs going that you think could suit me, will you give us a shout? Are you serious? Very. I need to earn the money I'm getting out of Alec. Here we go. Good. God, who's that? Tanya. Her real name's Megan Morgan. She's supposed to be a dancer. One of Alex's turns. Betty. Yeah. Betty, you've met uh, you've met Megan. You remember her, don't you? Yes. Yes, and I easily forgot. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. And that's Tina. <laughs> Tina, this is Megan. You'll be seeing quite a lot of Megan. She's my new housekeeper. Oh. Go on through them. Oh, I'll show you it. where everything is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you can see where he's up to. What am I going to do? Look, if you wanted my advice, Louis, you should have taken it weeks ago and I told you to keep away from Ball Rigby. Well, it's too late for that, though, isn't it? What am I going to do? Oh, I don't know, Lovey, and that's the truth. Cheer up, it might never happen. It already has happened. Sorry, I spoke. Look, let's face it, Don. The dog is a stumer. Ah, oh, come on, come on. Well, it won't run, will it? It doesn't want to run. We tried everything. No, it'd be different tonight. Oh, it'd be different, all right. There's four dogs running out the blazes. There'll be our dog standing there doing deep breathing exercises. Look, it's a racing dog, a pro. They're like comedians. They don't tell jokes all the time. Look, if Ben Elton was to come through that door now, I bet he wouldn't make you laugh. But on telly, it's different. No, it's not. It don't make me laugh then, either. Look, what I'm trying to say is, when Lucky's standing on that track and that electric air comes whizzing by, she'll run Well, I just hope you're all right. Well, there's one thing we know for sure, isn't there? What's that? She's not overtrained. She's well rested. <laughs> well, we know that's all right, aye. Betty. What? Go through to house for a minute, will you? See what her and Alec are up to. No, I'm sorry, lovey. I mean, if you want to go, you must go through. It's your house and your husband. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, it's something I've never done before, you know. What, not even when you've been resting? I thought you'd have done all sorts. Oh, I have. <laughs> but not housekeeping, like. Well, no, not as such. Uh, yeah, no, well, I mean... Uh... Mopping and dusting and peeling a potato. It's second nature to a woman, isn't it? I mean, I'm hopeless at anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the way I look at it, it's a challenge, isn't it? And if a good yeah. job comes up, well, here I am, on the spot. A good job? Mm. Oh, you've been bookings and that? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, don't you worry. I've got my ear to the ground. And the only trouble is, you see, Tanya, with a speciality act like yours, you're, you're a bit difficult to slot in these days. The well has dried up. I have noticed. Nothing since we got back from foreign parts. Oh, die. It's a desert out mm. there. Anyway, like I say, you'll find me very easy to work for. As long as the place is clean, something hot on the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's all there is to the job. Right. <clears throat> Washing and ironing, of course. <laughs> yeah. There might be a bit of harassment, though. What do you mean, harassment? Not from me, love. Not from me. No, no. It's the wife. Well, as I told you, you know, we're finished and she's been told to pack her bags and go, but uh, she might try something on with you. The odd nasty remark, something oh, like that. Well, it don't bother me. When you've danced at the Moulin Rouge, you're click eating, Lavender, the comments they make there, well, it's like water for decks back to me. <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> yes, so anyway, Megan, you'll, uh, you'll find every labour saving device in the kitchen there oh. fridge, cooker, microwave, dishwasher. Yeah. But try and keep off the microwave during the lunchtime because that's when Betty has her hotting up session. All right. Yes, and just ignore what anyone else might say to you. I'm the only one who can tell you what to do around here. Yeah, well, if anyone's looking for trouble, they can have it, cos I can handle it. Yes, well, uh, perhaps you'd like to see the bedroom now, Oh, eh? yes, right. <laughs> yes, I think you'll find it more than comfortable. We've let it out several times. We've never had any complaints. Well, neither have I come to that. <laughs> <laughs> Getting excited. Ah! 
you tell? But she's saying at least she knows where she's going. Told you. This dog is a pro. Oh, <laughs> oh, hey, Alfie, I've got to put a bet off with me, aren't well, you? Of course, have you? Up the back of your own dog, yeah. eh? Hey, yeah, well, it'll be enough for me just to see the dog come romping home, eh? <laughs> I, um, I came to find you, girl, because uh, I want to have a serious talk with you. Look, um, look, I, 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 know, I know you don't approve of the way I run the cafe, only it's, um, it's my place, you know, girl, and when it's, uh, when it's your own business, you look at things different, you know. So I've noticed. I hear you've given Phyllis the sack. Oh! She was getting on my nerves. Well, I know she can be a bit irritating, but she's a good worker. Oh, look, look, I, 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 didn't, I didn't come here to talk about Phyllis. It's, uh, I wanted to talk about you. Do you know, honestly, get you could have knocked me down with a feather when you well, walked out like that. Really? I thought you were glad to see the back of me. Oh, come on, go, give over. It's, um, well, I, I might have been a bit touchy with you lately, but um, well, I've had personal problems, and that's why, you see. Yes, well, I know all about personal problems. Oh, yes, well, of course you do. Anyway, between us, my um, my ex, Jim, well, he's been paying me money on my mortgage, you know, under the divorce agreement, and uh, anyway, he's found out I've sold the house, and, um, well, he's stopped paying me mortgage payments. <laughs> I can see why you might do that, Alma. Yes, well, that, um, that cafe in the flat upstairs, well, it's all I've got left. Oh, yeah, I, I know I'm not uh, cut out to run a cafe. I mean, some people are, some people aren't. Suits you to a T. Yeah. Alma, if you're asking me to come back, I don't think it'd work. I mean, I'm not trying to be all... No, 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 listen, listen. You, ha you haven't heard what I'm offering yet. How do you fancy coming in as a partner? Partner? Yeah, well, you buy a share in the place, yeah. you run it as manageress, and from that, you run a wage, and, and you get a cut in the profits. What do you say? You know, you need human company. You know, after a long day concentrating on one book, trying to impress the distilled essence of it into your brain. God, I can't do anything like that, me. You must be dead brainy. Ah, brainier than most, I dare say, but not as brainy as others. But at this time of the night, you like to meet your mates and have a drink and unwind. And where are they all? Well, I know where my mate is, Ivy. She's gone greyhound racing with Alf Roberts and Audrey and Don. Never asked me if I fancied it. <laughs> so where's all me pals, eh? Kevin's working late at the garage. Martin has gone to the pictures, probably taking Jenny with him. So who's left? Yeah. And I'm not drinking with Percy Sugden. I'd rather be lonely. <laughs> Curly, you can have a drink with me, love. Come on, don't be nervous. Let's you drink over. Well, you, you might find my chat a bit uh, avant-garde. Avant-garde? That means rude, doesn't it? No, no, it means a uh, modern, way out, d daring. Well, I suppose rude does cover one aspect of it. Oh, that sounds about right. Go on, set off, then. Well, I, I can't just start. You see, you, you put me off my stride a little bit. Yes? Right, right, of course you can, yes. Oh, Mr Gilroy. Yes, my love. Hey, listen, I'm OK for tonight, you know, if you want £12, I'm bound. Oh, oh, oh uh, thank you very much. It's very kind of you, Vera, but uh, I, I don't think so, love. Did I do something wrong last night, what? Uh, no, 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 not at all, love, no. Yeah. And uh, if I'm stuck, I'll call on you again. But I think I've managed to resolve my bar staff problems now, along with a number of others. And here is the very lady. Very nice, Megan, very, very nice. You've met Tina, of course. Oh, this is Vera, one of our most uh, respected regulars, Mr Sutton. Vera. This is Megan. She's my housekeeper and, well, girl Friday, really. <laughs> Not what I'd call her. Hello. Hello, so, love. Uh, Nobody busy, are we? No, no, but it'll book up now. I feel sure. I'm sure the regulars are going to take to you. Yeah. I've had that much on my mind with one thing and another. It's all got a bit out of hand. But now I'm being fed properly and generally looked after. I think we're going to do very, take very nice. Take the Brazilian nicely. rainforest. Please. You know, I mean, do you know how fast we're destroying that? Or the ecological time bomb we're laying down? Curly, I bet you... Curly, you'll have to excuse me, love. Just for a minute, if you don't mind. All right. And then that. That means you can add it. Right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get a hold of that now. That's it. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that teach you this one. Hey, Don, why don't we just run off and leave it? Oh, oh. come on, that's all be wrong. I mean, that little talk with its back. Well, it's no good, it won't run. It's faster than you. Yeah. Only just, though, only just. <laughs> right, so you are lovely. Uh, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Ta, per se, you're a gentleman. I've not seen her before, have I? Well, she's not a proper barmaid, you know. She's one of the landlord's women. How do you mean, one of his women? One of his turns. I reckon she's a dancer, but if you ask me, she's a bit long in the tooth and a bit bored in the beam for her cavorting about like they do. Still, I suppose she's glad of any work. So would I be wicked what that Alma did to me, you know? Uh, well, you had a good run. I mean, look at me. Chucked out of my caretaking job like an old glove. At 65, I was in the prime of my life. How old are you? Me? Well, over 35. <laughs> Oh. Ah, you yeah, are doing very nicely, Megan. Well, I fit in with anybody, Missy Kettles, when you're up to, don't you? <laughs> oh, yes. Alec, could I have a word? Well, I'm a bit busy at the moment. Well, I can shout it for all the pub to hear, if that's what you want, or I can say it to you on your own, which you prefer. <laughs> what have you got in that case? Some of my things. As long as there's nothing belonging to me in there. Where are you going with it, anyway? Out of here. For good. Yes, you've got what you wanted. I'm leaving. I know I said I never would, but I didn't bargain for you, bringing your hard-faced trollop in here under my nose. Well, I warned you, didn't I? I said what I'd do if you didn't buckle down. I said I'd get a housekeeper. Housekeeper, my Aunt Fanny. That's what she is, and it's all she is. An employee. Don't bother flannelling, Alec. Save it for the divorce court. This is going to cost you. I'm going to fight you, Alec, for every penny I can get off you. See how you like that. Alec! Alec! Breakfast, love. What a mess. I thought you liked your egg, Runny. Eh? No, no, not that. The backyard gate must have been left open. Some foul creature's been rummaging in the bins and turned one of them over. Oh, never mind. Sit down and have your breakfast uh, while it's hot. Uh, you, uh, you're not having any? Oh, I'll have a bit of toast later. I'll have a uh, cup of tea with you, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's the best time of day this is. Eh? Well, just the two of us before the rest of the staff come in. Look, uh, Megan. Mm -hmm. Let's get one thing straight. The less cosy you and me seem, I mean, are, the better. Especially after what's happened with Bet. No idea where she is, then? No. Well, bringing me here certainly didn't help the situation, that's for sure. Look, you needed the work, I needed a housekeeper. There's nothing more to it than that. Did I say there was? Well, well, no. Well, no. then. <laughs> Look, I'm going to make a start in the bedroom. You enjoy your breakfast. Is that the time? Right then, I'll be off. Off? Derek, I don't think you've heard one word I've been saying. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Mavis, but if I could just get seven down, it'd be the key to the whole left hand side. If you could just forget your crossword for one minute. Ah, oh, I'm all ears. Well, I said I thought we could go a walk this afternoon. That it? People do go out on bank holidays. The other people do. Lots of them. Yes, well, we don't have to go where everybody else goes. We could just go for a walk. A walk? Yes, it would do you good to get out. No, I don't think so, Mavis. I'm quite happy where I am, honestly. You haven't been out for days. Well, I haven't had anything to go out for, have I? You think firms would be queuing up for management executives of my experience and potential? I wasn't criticising you, Dad. I don't know what else I can do, short of lowering my sights. Ending up serving behind some shop counter somewhere. 
Like me, you mean? No, what I mean is that unless I believe in my own vision of my future, what chance have I got of convincing anyone else? Well, that's why I think it would do you good to get out. I mean, don't bury yourself here. Hold your head up. What was it you said? You're not out of work, you're just in transit between jobs. Well, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, right. Pennine Way. Pennine Way? Oh, lovely. <laughs> I could pack us a picnic on. No, no, maybe she don't understand. No, it's uh, seven down. Uh, writer takes German sounding negative en route across England. Pen. Nine. Way. Pennine Way. <laughs> now we're really motoring. <laughs> oh, Gail, shall I make us some sandwiches or something, eh? Oh, all right, if you're sure. Hi, love. Right, I'll see you later then. OK, tra. That was Gail on phone. She fancied taking kids out, and I said you couldn't go cos you were working, you know, but I'd love to go. Oh, great. And you can take that pie can with you if you can get her to stand up long enough. If I ever get my hands on that Harry Slinger again... Oh, Don, it's not Lucky's fault. She didn't win. Didn't win? If she'd gone any slower, she wouldn't even have come in last. Well, I'm sure she tried her best, didn't you, love, eh? You know what's the matter with her, don't you? You don't treat her right. Good morning. Is it? All right, good morning, Betty. How are you, Betty? Nice weather for the time of year, Betty. Right, that's the social pleasantries out of the way. Now, can I get on? Well, pardon me for breathing, I'm sure. <laughs> Any sign of Jack Flash? He is coming in today, I suppose. According to Vera, yes, but he's not shown his face yet. Oh, I suppose. <laughs> Good morning, Betty. Morning. Alec, love. She's still here, then. Uh, Betty, I don't know what you've had for your breakfast, but it certainly shortened your powers of observation. I had to put money on that Bet would have had her through them doors quicker than grease lightning. Yes. Well, as it happens, it was Bet who went through them doors like grease lightning. Bet? She walked out on me last night. Where's she gone? I don't know. She just washed her hands of this place, you, me, the lot, and gone. Well, you could hardly blame her, could you? Look, Megan is my housekeeper. Yes, of course she is, Alec. Come off it, pull the other one, it's got bells on. Now, oh, look, Betty, I don't have to put up with all this. No, you don't. Not one minute longer, cos I am not stopping. You can send my money on. Now, oh, hang on a minute. Look, I'll see you, Alec. Hiya! Hey, I wondered when cavalry had arrived. Sorry to disappoint you. Why? Cos I'm not stopping. You're not stopping? Oh, you're not going there with flu bug and all? No, not a flu bug, no. But if you were to say parasite that seems to thrive on human misery, you won't be far off the mark. I'm not with you. Well, you better have a word with Alec, can't you? Cos I'm going, try. Watch it. Ooh, kids. <laughs> Bet, hang on a minute, lovey. Ah, Betsy. I thought you'd skipped. <laughs> well, only as far as Rita's. Oh. Last night, anyway. Do you think that's wise? I mean, I thought the solicitor told you to stay put. I know what the solicitor said. Well, don't you think you're cutting your own throat? What, with Alex flipping living housekeeper <sighs> getting her feet under the table? Who isn't exactly, by her own admission, a paragon of virtue, as far as Alex's concerned, or anybody else for that matter? No, you've no need to worry on my account, Betty. I reckon it's Alec who's got the problems. Uh, you got another one now, cos I've just jacked it in and all. Oh, Betty. I mean, if you're doing that on my account, well, thanks, but there's no need, love, honest. I'm more than capable of fighting my own battles. It's your job. <laughs> it was my job. Look, whatever Alec Gilroy's up to, I don't want any part of it. I don't know what's keeping Mr. Roberts. Em <sighs> back, he said. Mm. Oh. Hi. Um, Dr. Oh, hello, Dom. Sorry about this. I've just dropped a jar of pickles. I've got to get it up until it stinks place out. What can I do you for? Uh, about Lucky. Oh, I wanted a word with you about that, actually. Uh, yeah. OK, look, uh, the dog had a bad day. <laughs> a bad day? You can say that again. Well, I thought I'd give her one more race, just to prove herself like. Well, you do what you like, mate, but uh, count me out. Oh, come on. Look, I'll... I can't afford the time, Don. I mean, you know, even if I'd romped home last time, I still can't afford the time. I can't afford to leave I've the shop, can I? Out. I mean, uh, anyway, you'll have to excuse me. Oh, yeah. Uh... Hi, Dom. Hello. Oh, Mr Brenham. Give that to Lucky from me, will you? One's not going to ruin a figure, is it? Oh, no. Don't make much difference now, any road. Flat. Yeah, that place upstairs. 
A couple of rooms hardly big enough to swing yeah, your cat all in. All right, all right. What about it? Well, I thought you might fancy letting it again. You what? After the trouble I've just had? Oh, I couldn't agree with you more, Alpha. Eh? Something you could well do without right. at your time of life, no. What you need is a smart, mature businesswoman. Pays her rent on the nail, tucked up in bed, ten o'clock at night with a cup of cocoa. Bet you'd snap around off, am I right? Oh, uh, yeah. I suppose they're queuing up three deep outside, are they? Twenty quid a week, Curly paid you in rent, right? I did. Right. There's a week's rent in advance, oh. and I'll be back a bit later with my gear. Hey, what's this for? And you, you be tickled pink. Hey, hang on a minute. A bit, Lord. Bet! I better go and make you a cup of tea, Mr Roberts. Make me a cup of tea, love. Can I go and see the animals, Mum? Yeah. Go on, Ben. Hey, hey! hey. Aren't you going to take Sarah Louise with you? Do I have to? Oh, go on, I'll take her. Nicky can do it. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't they look a picture pair of them? <laughs> they do when they're like that. <laughs> hey, yes, it's been a right treat today, hasn't it? So we couldn't have done it if you'd still been working at that cafe. I can't tell you how glad I am that you've packed it in, Gail. So you said. I mean, look at the difference it's made to the kids while you're off. They want to come to any harm. I can assure you that. Oh, yeah, but it's not just them, love, is it? I mean, you were missing most of the growing up, weren't you? Ivy, I, I didn't come out here to talk about the cafe. No. Still, you're better off out of it from where I can hear. Do you know there's hardly anybody goes in anymore? Mind you, where she treats folk, it's not surprising, is it? If she ever expects to make a go of that place, she's never going to do it to her brand of charm, that's for sure. Yes, Ivy. Anyway, that's her I'm the admin, isn't it? Hello. Oh, it's our love. Hey, so what happened? I don't know. I wasn't here, was I? What you must have heard. Well, all I heard was, you know, when Betty came in this morning, she found out Bet had slung her out. Well, she was off like a rat of a drain pipe, didn't she? Mm. So it's just you and them two Christmas decorations, is it? Looks like it. Yeah, well, you just make sure you get what's coming. I'm working on it, Vera. Right. Yeah. Well, your dinner's in the oven. Do you want to help you here for an hour? Oh, good girl. Right, you are. Right, fellas, what can I be doing for you, then? Oh. Like that. Famous, Percy, just the man I want to see. What is it now, woman? What would you like to drink, love? I'm quite capable of buying my own drinks, thank you very much. Yeah, that support you've given me this last few days, it's the least I can do. What would you like, love? Half a bitter, is it? Go on, then, seeing as you insist, but just the one. When we're ready, happen that's all we'll have time for. Hey? Well, it's a nice day. We don't want to be cooped up in here, do we? Where would you fancy going, Mum? <laughs> right. Well, everything seems to be under control. I'll go and sample this gastronomic delight you've concocted for me. <laughs> All right. Now. Everything under control, cocky devil. I wonder if Brewery would see it that way, eh? Eh? But they can't go to window what's been going on here, can they? Or else I reckon Mr Smart Alec Gilroy would be grinning over the other side of his chops. <laughs> Are you better get off if you're going? No, it's all right. Kev said he'd give us a shout when he come in, oh, so... Right, that's it for now. I'll bring the rest of my stuff later. So if you just let me have the key, this whole system's go. Uh, look, Bet, do you think this is a good idea? Well, it makes a lot more sense than shinning up and down a drain pipe every time I want to get in. No, no, I mean about you having the flat. Now, look, Alf, if you can't do an old mate a favour, I wouldn't have asked if I wasn't desperate. The key. Ta, love, and don't look so worried. You won't even know I'm here. Mm. I'm going to take one of these for my dinner. Stick it on my bill, will you, love? Fetch me case up when you've got a minute. Fetch your case. See ya, see ya. You never know the minute, dear. If anybody had told me this morning when I opened up that I would have Bet Gilroy as my lodger by lunchtime, I'd have had him certified, I'm telling you. Yeah, well, you're not the only one in for a surprise, are you? How do you mean? Mrs Roberts doesn't know about your paying guests yet, does she? Oh. Alec. Are you serious about me giving up my night off? Well, I'll make it up to you. It's not the money, Alec. This job is playing havoc with my love life. What love life? Oh, exactly. Alec, Alec, if you stuck for an extra pair of hands behind the bar, our Vera would only be too happy to step in you. Uh, yes, well, I'll bear that in mind, Jack. Well, if your mates can't rally round in your hour of need, it's a poor doing it. Uh, vodka and tonic, love, please. Ah. Just the lady I wanted to see. Huh? Oh, yes. In your role of sometime confidant to my wife, I was wondering if she's given you any hint of where she's carted herself off to when she was out of here. Matters, does it? Of course it matters. But it doesn't seem to bother you when you're wielding Tanya the Terrible. Her name's Megan. Tanya's her stage name. While she's here, she's just plain Megan. She looks anything but plain to me, Alec. 
Yes, thanks, love. It's a pound of five. Thank, Thank you. you. From the house. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. What have I done to deserve that? Might I try answering the question? What was it again? Do you know where Bet went when she left here? Yes. As it happens, I do. She stayed the night at my place. Your place? Well, you didn't expect her to doss down under railway arches, did you? Look, could you just let her know that I didn't force her to leave? I didn't even want her to leave. If you could just mention that when you get back home. Be a bit difficult, that, Alec, seeing as she's not there anymore. Not there? Well, it's no secret, I suppose. She's taking the flat over yes. Alf's corner shop. And how long is she intending to stop there? You tell me. Well, I don't know what game she's playing. But in my book, she's not being very smart. I doubt the divorce courts will take a very rosy view of desertion. Desertion? Come on, Alec. I mean, what are they going to think about you and your living housekeeper? How does that look in your book? Cheers, Alec. <laughs> Right, are you fit? Uh, yeah, I'm ready when you are. Good. Oh, Mr. Roberts, can I go now, please? Yeah, of course you can. Where are you going anyway? Car racing. Well, when it says cars, they've got four wheels and an engine, but that's about oh, it from what I've heard. There's all sorts there. Stock cars, bangers, be a great afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Rather you than me, though. Hey, what time's Mark picking us up? Half an hour, so come on. Half an hour? I suppose you want your dinner and all before we go. Yeah, I suppose. Well, I suppose. Oh, scoot. My husband's Hello, still lurking behind all them shelves. Here's Mrs. Roberts and he's all yours. I'll yeah. see you later. Right. Bye. Hello, Hello. Hello, my love. What it is to be young, eh? Eh? Well, getting taken out for the afternoon. Oh, so that's the secret, is it? What secret? How do you get taken out for the afternoon? No, no, listen, look, I'm just opening for an hour or two, that's <laughs> all. Then we'll go out and I'll buy you a slap-up meal somewhere. How's that suit you? You're on. Did you hear that? Er, uh, yeah. You've not let that Curly move back up in the flat, have you? No, no, it's not Curly, but we do have another lodger. Oh, good, who? Yeah, well, it's only temporary, like, as far as I know. Yeah, all right, who are they? Er, uh, well, Bet. Bet Gilroy? Yeah. Well, well, she'd know where else to go, you see, so uh, what else could I say? You could have said no. Well, she's an old mate. You're an old fool. Oh, come on, it won't... Look, you know why she left the Rovers, don't you? Because of Alex's antics with that Megan. Well, she's his housekeeper. Oh, <laughs> so he says. I don't know that's how the divorce court's going to see it when it comes to the crunch, at least uh, not according to what I heard from Rita. Divorce? Look, what's that got to do with me? Alfie, what sauce for the goose? I mean, Alec Gilroy is going to be watching you and her like a hawk. You take just one step up them stairs to the flat now, and look, see where that goes. If you believe for one minute, <laughs> any intention. It's not a question of what I believe, is it? Hmm? Ah, he's a good one, that Jack Wade. He's not dropped an end yet. Did you hear what I said? I can't help hearing what you say. Can I see you kept up a non-stop running commentary ever since we got here? A quiet afternoon at Bowles, that's what I planned. We're having a quiet afternoon at Bowles. I don't know why you're not playing. You're a dab hand, and I'm a very good learner. Look, can you not keep quiet just for five minutes? Is that what you want? It is. All right, it's a lovely afternoon. Let's sit back and make the most of it. Oh, what's the use? Where are you off to? I'm going to get a cup of tea. I'll see you later. You will not, you know. Oh, good. I'm coming with you. Here, have you tried their jam donuts? They're glorious. Come on, Mo. We're getting a bit low on tea bags. I'll write them on your list. Sorry? Tea bags. All oh, right. Derek, this sounds just what you're looking for. Mm. Uh, experience, person required with sales background. What's the point? A proven track record in middle management. Yes. Who feels he's not reached the peak of his achievement. That's true. For executive sales position, marketing brand leaders in their field, extensive travel in the Northwest, basic salary plus generous commission. Ideal opportunity for potential high flyer looking for a chance to spread his wings. Mm, under 35. No, no, it doesn't say that. It says they want a mature person. <laughs> well, whatever else you are, Derek, you're certainly that. Hmm. Yes, I suppose I am. <laughs> What's the use? If the job's half it says it is, it'll be gone by now. Well, you won't 
no, unless you ask, will you? All right, I'll send for an application form tomorrow. No, no, it's a phone number. So I'll phone tomorrow. Well, you can phone now. Now? It's a bank holiday, isn't it? It says phone any time. Well, they've probably got an answering machine if there's nobody there. Oh, go on. It won't make any difference. And I hate talking to those things. Derek Wilton, I thought you considered yourself to be an out-of-work executive. Between jobs executive. All oh, right, then, between jobs executive. I, I thought you were meant to be top management potential, capable of organising your business life with all the precision of a well-oiled machine. Who told you that? You did, repeatedly. Oh, yeah. I suppose that is how I see myself on my more confident days. Well, I've got news for you, Derek. I'm afraid I can't agree with you. Maybe. Not if you can't even face the prospect of talking to an answering machine. But... Oh. You know, I sometimes wonder where they all come from. Bank holiday and all. Oh, they're complaining here? Oh, no, no, no. Well, I think we did very well, considering. Considering what? Well, considering we were hard-pressed, all of us. <laughs> there is just one thing, though. Uh, I don't think you need to be quite so familiar with the punters. They might start getting the wrong idea, especially after they've had a couple, you know. Well, I thought I was supposed to be friendly. Oh, friendly, yes. But, I mean, you can do things with MIZOs that have make men leave home. If, you, if you're thinking of getting this out, you, you could do my lilac shirt for tonight. Oh, right. Hey, hang on a minute. Look, well, you've got some on your timing. Oh, it's only a bit come of gravy. It'll come off. Jack's playing with that plastic rubble, so I'm off. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You're not interrupting anything. I've just got a spot of gravy on my tie. Whatever you say, Mr Gilroy. I'll see you later. <laughs> look, look, Megan, I, kn I know you mean well, but we're going to have to watch our every step. We must do nothing that can be construed as in any way improper. Oh, Alec, relax, will you? Look, you don't have to spell anything out to me. I know the score. One false move and that wife of yours will have you for breakfast. Where would that leave me? Well, leave us? Exactly. Yes, we don't want that, do we? No, no, you've got the picture. Yes, I have. Now, look, Alec, you and I make a very good team. You don't think I'd do anything to foul that up, do you, love? <clears throat> well, yes, I do feel I've got the necessary experience. That's why I'm ringing. Tomorrow. I can make that. Twelve o'clock, suit me fine. Yeah, uh, just, just a minute, I'll get a pen. Um, right. Right. Got that. Yes. Twelve o'clock tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye. Well? Well, it wasn't an answering machine. Oh. It seems it was such an important position that it was the managing director himself. And he was very impressed I'd taken the trouble to ring on a bank holiday. I told you. You certainly did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did he say? Well, I've got an interview tomorrow. Oh, Jerry, that's marvellous. Um, well, what does, uh, what's the job about? Sales executive. Yes, well, I, I know that, but what does it entail? Well, mm, marketing leading brands. Oh, leading brands of what? He didn't say. But you see, I was right. It was just a matter of time before somebody recognised my qualities and ability for what they are. Oh. <laughs> mm. Listen, love, you go upstairs and get your hands and face washed, all right? Miss Gale. Oh, she's just called with some mother. She won't be a few minutes. She's taking Sarah Louise. Yeah, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, we did, love. We've had a lovely day. I tell you what, Lucky enjoyed every minute of it. <sighs> hey, she's smashing with kids. Yeah, love. Uh... I've, uh, I've just had a chat with Alf uh, about Lucky, and uh, he wants out. So? So I haven't got time to exercise it all by myself, have I? Not as much as she needs. Look, I'm sorry, love, she'll have to go. Oh. I'm going to enjoy this. First bit of peace and quiet I've had all day. Peace and quiet in here? After what I've been to in the under that Phyllis Pierce today, the, the Western Desert campaign was peace and quiet. Cheers. Oh, there you are, Percy. I thought I'd find you near. Oh, no, I don't believe it. What are you doing here? Well, I didn't get the chance to thank you, love, for a lovely afternoon out. And then I got separated from you when you pushed me on the bus and said you'd catch next one. Well, it were full. Percy, there were plenty of room. Well, it looked full to me. Oh, that's you all over, isn't it? Chivalrous to the last. Anyway, I'll have a small sherry if you're thinking of asking. She can't seriously think there's anything going on between me and Megan. 
Well, you better ask her that yourself, Alan. Chance would be a fine thing. Ah, oh, she'll be round. To talk? Pick up her gear. I mean, there's bound to be something that she's left that she needs. Thanks, Rita. Thanks a lot. So it's all over between them two, is it? Lady Mock and Alec. <laughs> Vera, that's better than Alec's business. Yeah, but she's slung her up, <laughs> can't she? Left him in here on his own with his R ring. Don't sound like the actions of a dutiful wife to me. If you know all the answers, why are you asking me, Vera? Hey, Jack! What? She's definitely not coming back. Who is it? Bear, Rita Fairclough was just saying. I am running about here like a chicken with no flaming head on. Can you stop me working there? Tell me that. Yeah, because I think that Bruni definitely won't be chuffed when they get wind of this. What the landlord wife's carpet? He's shacked up with a fancy now, woman. Hang on, Peter. That is not the way that he sees it. Yeah, but it'll be with the Bruni sees it, won't it? And when they find out, well, he's for the eye jump. He'll be out of here like a dozen salts. Well, if there's uh, definitely no chance of them getting together. Look, I'm telling you, you play your cards right, you could have your name above that door at last, Jack. <laughs> Women, how are you? With you. I'm a million miles ahead of you, Vera. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, did you manage to ring them? Did you manage to fix it up? Don't worry, don't worry. I'm due at the brewery at one o'clock. Oh, one o'clock? How are you going to manage to get off work at oh, that just time? Just leave it to me, eh? Hey? Plan A is in progress. <laughs> oh, Jack, just think our name's up there. Licensed as well. Well, mine, anyway. And mine? Hey, I'm going to be landlady, ah. Keep your voice down, Alec Gilroy, can hear grass growing. Sorry. Hey, and don't you go telling your daft mates over there, neither, will you? What? Them blabbermouths? What do you think I am, daft, eh? <laughs> Give yeah. over, fear of folk might be watching. Morning, boss. Morning, Tina. Morning. And another beauty sleep, I see. Yes, Jack. <laughs> it's a pity Kipping doesn't do the same for me and you, eh, boss? <laughs> Everybody in the living room. What, what, what's going on in the living room, boss? Staff meeting. Oh, yeah, love, I made you some toast. You haven't had any breakfast, Oh, have I have too many pressing things on my mind to think about my stomach. Yes, well, alcohol is no substitute for food, Alec. Not another wise Welsh saying, please. Well, what sort of an advert would it be for my tender loving care if you went around looking like a razor blade? Yes, well, I'll have it later. <laughs> Sit down. Right. I have just been making a phone call oh. to Betty. Oh. And she categorically refuses to come back here. And I've offered her big money, I can tell you. After all you've done for her now, keeping her in work at her age. Aye, aye, that Megan. The man's a saint. Mm. And so, we're going to have to plug the hole in the dike. All of you. Well, whatever you say, love. Well, I'm not much of a cook. You can open the tin of mushy peas and pour them oh, in a pan, can't yes, you? Yes, of course I can. Then you're a cook. Well, I can make the odd sandwich or something plasticky like ham or cheese. I do a lie in sardines, though, and to play havoc with my musk scent. And you can rest assured on me, boss. I can. I might only have two hands, but the punters are going to think there's ten men behind that bar. Don't worry, we'll stand with you, because we wouldn't see a man who's watched his wife and hot pot cook desert him go to the wall. Is that right, ladies? Well, you can definitely depend on me, Mr Gilroy. Well, you don't have to ask me, love. <laughs> yeah. Yes, well, I'm very touched. Say no more. Come, Tina. Let's get stuck in. <laughs> it's too early in the year, isn't it, for him to have been eating funny mushrooms? Do you know, your nasty experience with Bet has made you a very bitter and suspicious man, Alec. Do you know that? Do you wonder? No. But if you let me... I'll bring a smile back into your life. I eat your toast, there's a good boy. Hiya. Hello. 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 Do you know, I was just going to get me brekker when I realised I'd nothing in. Good job I live over a grocery shop, eh? Yeah. I'll just go and get me apricot and nut muesli. Five pounds, fifteen down, please. Well, can we call it a straight fiver? No, we can't. Well, I mean, it's changing a tenner. Five pounds, fifteen down, please. Oh, that was worth Thank you. Oh, hell. Yeah? About lucky. I'm gonna have to get rid, mate. She's eating us out of the house and home. I mean, most of this is dog grub. And for what? Just for her to come in last. Poor dog. What do you mean, get rid of her? Oh, I don't mean, I mean, I mean, Seth Floggy. Yeah, she's a dead loss anyway, is that dog? Well, I think she's a lovely little thing. Little? Yeah. It's a greyhound. You sound like Ivy. Oh. How do we know it'll go to a good home, she says? It's settled in with us, she says. It was supposed to be a nice little earner, not a pet. 
Do you know, it's just a really mean, cruel streak in him where animals are concerned, that dog. Yeah, well, men have, haven't they? They go around shooting anything that moves, mm. don't they? Yeah. Well, I don't. Right, I think I've got the essentials. <laughs> now, before you ring them up, can I have take? I'm a bit strapped for cash, leaving half and home a bit quick, like. Uh, yeah, of course you Ah, oh, thanks, Al. Like old times, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I were always broke when I lived here before. Well, you'll know how it is. Single girls tend to spend the brass on plunging necklines rather than butter and sugar, don't they? Do they? Oh, uh, before I forget, can I have a loaf? Oh, oh, no, a packet of Miss Siggy's, please, Audrey. Oh, how are you doing, then? <laughs> All squeaky clean and spick and span. Mm, I usually am, Mavis. It's what I call the clean hanky syndrome. <laughs> clean hanky syndrome? There it was. Every morning without fail on the corner of the dresser. A clean hanky, snow white and book neat. Put there by mother for me to pick up on the way to school. And later on to the office. It's set a standard I've adhered to religiously ever since. Well, I've got more things to do than put out a clean hanky for you every day, ah. Derek. Besides which, tissues are more hygienic. Mm. Now, let's have a look at you. Do you think this shirt goes with this suit? Mm, I think perhaps your blue shirt would have been better. Do you? Oh, yes, but that one's all right. I mean, you're going for an interview for a salesman job, not a male model. Mavis, I don't want to be worrying about my appearance. It's absolutely essential to be completely relaxed and at ease with oneself during an interview. I'll change into the blue. Yes, Derek. Um, it's not a salesman's job, Mavis. It's a sales executive position. Yes, Derek. Mother, are you? I don't know, I'd ask you to come over, I'll quail. Would you want a drink or something? No, 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 I'll be all right. Hey, what's up with that, Jack? Well, he says he's come over all queer. Oh, is that right? Um, have you turned into a horse, Jack, sleeping on your feet? Look, he's not very well, Mr Gilroy, oh. can't you see? Oh, why, what's up with him? I don't know, boss, I feel all up and bothered and dizzy, you know. I think I know what it was. It was... Going back too soon after that bout of flu, it's never recommended. I didn't want to let you down, you see. Well, you'd better go and have a sit down for a five minutes. No, no, I think it'd be better if I went home and got my head down for a bit. I'd be as right as rain for tonight. Are you sure you're that bad? Oh, like death warmed up, I think. Well, you better cut along home then. All right, thanks, thanks. But if you should make a miraculous recovery, I expect you to come straight back here. Oh, I will, I will. Brilliant. Uh, are you sure you do want me to come home with you, Jack? I mean, will you be all right? No, no, Bonfrey. You, you, you stop here and have your lunch. I'll be all right on my own, sweetheart. Go on. All right, love. Oh. He can't be feeling very well, Mr Gilroy. It takes a lot for our Jack to leave his work. He was on off ten days once with a bunion. Oh, I know. A bit of gone funny, haven't it? There you are, Mr Sugden. So, uh, Jack Douglas not had one of these pies, has he, this morning, or a dollar for mushy peas? No, he hasn't. And even if he had, they wouldn't have made him ill, especially the mushy peas. I can highly recommend them. Mushy peas? It's a bit of a come down from Betty Turpin's hot pot, I can tell you. I don't know what all these pubs coming to. I'm doing my flipping best. Take the notice of Percy, love. He'd find something to complain about if he won a free holiday. Oh, Thank you. Hi, Hello. Are you all right? Not so bad, you. Fine. Uh, hey, hey, where do you think you're going? To get me white coat shoes. I left them behind. Where are they? In the bedroom, I think. Megan? Would you go to the front bedroom and see if you can see a pair of white coat shoes belonging to Mrs Gilroy? Bring them here. I can get them myself. I don't like strangers wandering about the bar. Megan? Okay. Now, will you return to the public side of the bar? You're bloody unbelievable, you. Do you know that? Please. Thank you. What are you having to drink, then? A gin and tonic, please, Rita. And I'll have a vodka and tonic, please, Alec. Tina? Yeah? A gin and tonic and a vodka for these ladies. Talk about pouring the booty. You could say that, yeah. A pig. And they say women are vindictive. We're amateurs. Are these the ones? Yeah. You might have put them in a bag for her. It doesn't matter, Rita. Oh. Hey, do you know Hello. I put money on you being at Rovers? Uh, well, no, uh, I had to look after Lucky because Don's at work. Oh, yes. He said he wanted to get rid of her. Hey, Ivy. 
Are you game for a lark? A lark? Yeah, I've got to do something crazy with my life, otherwise I'm going to start feeling my age and that would be too depressing. I don't want all the trouble of a toy boy. Audrey? <laughs> Why don't we take her on? Well, no, because Tom wants his bass back up. Yeah, all right. Well, we're paying back out of our first winnings. Winnings? What do you mean, intro for a race? Or races, maybe? You bar. Oh, Ivy, come on. I mean, you've seen them posh women in the big hats going into the winner's enclosure or whatever at Ascot. The winner is owned by Mrs Charlie Toffinose. Audrey, this is a dog. So, she still could be a winner. And I'd love a big hat. Yes, and you'd look right cut. It oh, dogs, come wouldn't you? on. You wouldn't have to get rid of her either. You bar, mate. But you're on. <laughs> Oh, uh, she's got a cheek. What? Well, all right, she wanted her shoes, but to sit there talking and drinking for hours, well, it's provocative. Still, you can see she's a brassy cow, but just looking at her. I'll never know why you married her, Alec. I think we're being talked about. Megan, the uh, only Welsh python in captivity, is looking at us and her ruby red lips are moving. Did you see that? Confirms totally what I said. She's pig ignorant. Nice one. I shouldn't have done it, though. And that's sinking to her level. I should try and keep my dignity. Hey, Bear, do you think it's a good idea getting a, a job in another pub? I mean, you're going to look a bit of a peep show behind Bart Flying Horse. Ex Rover's landlady. Needs must, Rita. I need the money. And I wouldn't demean myself by asking Gilroy for any. No. <laughs> I'll wait and skin him alive in the divorce court. Anyway, I might not get the job at the Flying Horse. My qualifications might not be good enough. How did it come to this bit? <laughs> Whoever said talking helps wants shooting. Doesn't as far as me and Alec are concerned. It's all downhill from the first sentence. You and Alec definitely all washed up. Rita Love, me and Alec are dead and buried. Hey, I shouldn't be here. I don't want to be late for the interview. Or I'll be queuing up at the job centre. True. Oh, I've not abandoned my post, Rita. Jenny's standing in. See you later, Rita. All right, love. And good luck. Thanks. Why does she need good luck? She's going after another job. How did you go with your job, Derek? Oh, it's a long story, Rita. I... Uh, Sherry, maybe? Yes, please. The boss was unfortunately detained, so he has to go back at three. He's a bit disgruntled. I bet he is. Mm -hmm. See you later. All right, bye. Oh, yeah. Rallycross is brilliant, though. I tell you, we had a great time. Me, Sal, a couple of mates. You want to come with us next time, Mr Sugden? You never know. You might even get the buggy. Can you drive, by the way? Can I, dr can I drive? Oh, I've driven everything by the tank. Oh, yes, I have that. Armoured cars, Bren gun carriers, personnel carriers, scouting cars, you name it. And as for lorries, I once drove one 50 mile up a wadi with a German 88 up my backside. <laughs> I kept moving and all, I'll tell you. There we are. Oh, good. Uh, cheers, Mavis. Cheers. What's that? It's a whiskey chaser. Oh, Derry, do you think you should be drinking whiskey with an interview looming? That's why I'm drinking it, Mavis. I've decided to take the bold approach to this interview. Give the impression that I'm one of the boys. Never far from a bottle of scotch and an amorous interlude. Instead of, well, being me. Virtually teetotal and absolutely loyal. I should hope you are loyal. No, I, I said it was only an impression I was trying to give, Mavis. In my experience, intemperance never stopped people from getting top jobs. Well, it should. Not in the world we live in, Mavis. <coughs> Mr Duckworth? I bet you're a model. No, I'm a receptionist. Well, I bet you was a model then. No, I've always been a receptionist. Well, you should have been a model. I wouldn't be a model if you paid me. Mr Ridley's ready. He'll see you now. 
Through the door and first door on your right. Hey. Thanks. Mr. Duckworth. Hey. I'm a judo black belt, if that's any interest to you. Hmm. Yeah. Enter. Mr. Ridley. Sorry about that. Just checking the combat readiness of a Minuteman missile in a silo in North Dakota. Joke. <laughs> have you got a computer, Mr... Uh... Uh, Jack, Jack, Jack Douglas. No, I haven't, no. Marvellous toy. One minute I'm fighting Star Wars, the next I'm Michael Burke. Well, let's see what it can tell us about the rover's return. Hmm, nothing much wrong there. Good little pub. One of the jewels in the Newton and Ridley crown. So what's this problem you think we ought to know about, Mr. Duckworth? Well, it, it's not as bad as you might have heard, actually. I haven't heard anything, Mr. Duckworth. Oh, yeah, I'm very surprised. Look, I, I don't know how to put this, Mr. Ridley, but we've been very good friends and employee of both Betts and Alec Gilroy for a lot of years now. Why not just be blunt? They've split up. The marriage has gone bust. Oh, dear. My sentiments, exactly. It is a tragedy. It seems such a well-matched couple, just like me and the wife. The impression I had. Ah, she's gone, packed her bags, left the pub. I see. That's not all, Mr Ridley. It isn't. The woman who cooks the grub, she's slung her hook as well. Well, you can imagine the chaos, can't you? Landlady, gone. Coop, gone. Two rank amateurs in the place, both women. I don't know how I managed to keep that pub going. You? Well, Alec is in no fit state, bless him. He's all broke up. Shadow of his former self. It, it, it's tragic. Well, thank you for letting us know, Mr Duckworth. It's obviously something we should know about. Yeah, well, I thought you should. I was reluctant about coming here, you know. This is not my style, this telling tales. But I thought, well, where the good of the brewery is concerned... I'm very grateful, Mr Duckworth. And I thought, well, no, I tell a lie. Me and the missus thought, actually, I mean, if things do get any worse, God forbid, I mean, if Ali does pull out, which is quite possible in his mental state, you know, you would know where to come for help. Where? Me and the missus. Oh, we could step in at a minute's notice. The pub would be back on course in less. That's very reassuring to know. Ah, it's the least I can do. I mean, they've been very good gaffers to me, Newton and Ridley. Oh, we like to think we are. So you'll definitely uh, think of me and the missus if things go worse at the Rovers? Oh, I'll do more than that, Mr Duckworth. I'll feed you both into my computer. <laughs> you can have a microchip all to yourselves. Huh? Hey, 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 give over, Mr Nigel. Folk will be thinking we're yuppies, won't they? <coughs> Betsy! Oh, I was just asking where you in, but... Uh... Well, order were a bit vague. I think she'd rather forget I was on the premises. Oh, how are you, Doug? I've got a job. A job where? Flying horse. Act before you say anything, at least I'll be doing what I know best. Well, I suppose so. But you should be down there. You should be behind that bar at the Rovers. That's where you belong. I thought I was settled there for the rest of my life, Betty. I really did. Well, it's not too late, love it. I think you're the only one that thinks like that, Betty. I really, really do. Now, Keep in touch. Don't yeah. forget. You as well, Doug. Yeah. And take care. Yeah, you take care of yourself. Bye bye, chicken. Bye bye. <sighs> Whose idea were this? I bet it was my mum's, weren't it? Uh, no, it was it was a joint idea. What idea is this then? My mum and Ivy's mad idea. What idea? You don't know, do you? <laughs> he doesn't know, does he? Uh, no, not yet. Well, would somebody please explain? Well, you tell him. <laughs> oh, no. It was your idea. <laughs> Come on, I'm waiting. Grandma Ivy and Grandma Rudge, we are going to put Lucky in for the races. And that just about sums it up. Two grannies and a dopey dog. Come on, then, what's the tagline? I mean, it is a joke, isn't it? No, it isn't. I wish you'd shut up, Nicky. No, it's not a joke. Honestly, Don. Audrey and me have decided to take Lucky and we're going to race her. Yeah, and I suppose for your next trick, you'll pluck a parrot out of thin air. Oh, oh, oh. Derek. Mavis. Oh, where have you been? Uh, I've been being interviewed. Where do you think I've been? Well, until this time. Yes. And what an interview. Oh, you poor thing. I was dead right, you know. Oh, yes. Right, what about? About my approach to the interview, you know. 
the one of the boys approach. I told you. Whiskey fumes on the breath. Hail fellow well met. The odd risque story. Well, did you get the job? Of course I got the job. Oh, Dick. Oh, I'm so pleased for you. Thank you. Well, aren't you pleased? Yes, of course I am. Well, you don't sound it. Is it an executive position? Mm, no, oh. not quite. Well, what sort of position is it then? Well, salesman. But with a huge territory, I mean, practically the whole northwest of England. Well, that's good. Yes. <laughs> well, what will you be selling? I mean, what does the firm make? What's its product? Uh, products, oh. actually. Well, what's its products then? Well, quite a variety. Shall I'd imagine there is a variety of its products. There is. What? A variety. Oh, Derek, what are you going to be selling? Well, I've, I've got a sample case, actually. Oh, where? I left it out on the landing. Well, why did you do that? Maybe I wish you'd stop firing questions at me like I'm some sort of criminal. I'm only firing questions at you because you seem reluctant to give me a proper answer. I'm not reluctant. Well, then, will you answer me? Why did you leave your sample case on the landing? Sample case. Satisfied? Well, open it. Open it? <laughs> yes, open it! <sighs> what are these? Novelties, Mavis. Oh. Novelties. Yes, Mavis. Through the entire Northwest. I think they should go very well, don't you? This time of year. Holiday season. That frog jumps. Hmm. Quite comical, really. <laughs> he's, um, he's made a very quick recovery, isn't he? Oh, I expect it to be at least another week. He always has an illness and then a relapse. Yeah, well, some people need a crisis in their life to bring the best out to them. See, stop just trusting people. Never mind. Are you all right, boss? No. Come and sit down. Eh? Come on. Take it nice and easy. Come and sit down. Take it easy. There. Rest your bum there. Look, it is enough for us to know that you are at the helm. All right. All right, kid. He's after a pay rise, he is. That's what he's after. I knew it wouldn't take long. Trust people? What reason have I got to trust anybody? Well, you can trust me, love. Boo! I wish you wouldn't do that. I'm a cold spring, you know. I act very quickly and very aggressively when startled. Oh, I wish you would. What are you having to drink? I've just got one in. Go on, have a brandy. I'm having one. Well, go on, then. I'm not feeling 100% as it happens. Well, what's the matter, love? I've got a sickly stomach. Oh, you go and sit down. I'll bring it to you. I'll have you right before the night's out. Oh, what way up, Tom? Hey, hey. what did you want to say when you turned in? Well, you were a bit surprised when you come in. Yeah, well, you had me full for a minute. You did look poor looking. <laughs> Mind you, you've always been good at swinging lead, you, haven't you? Now, come on, Vera. The past is past. We are now a team with one thought in mind to get this pub. Yeah. But what if uh, Alec decides not to leave? You know, and he moves no. in with Megan the Mouse. Don't you worry about that. The skids are under him. Bye bye, Alec. Do you think so? Definitely. Yeah. Hey, well, when we come to live here, we'll have to sell our house, won't we? Mm. I think I'll have valuations in. Mm. Yeah, it'd be worth a fortune with that stone cladding. Yeah, that's a good idea, that, because we'll need a few, Bob, won't we? For fixes and fittings. You yeah. Know. yeah. Hey, landlord and landlady. Yeah. Oh, evening, Alec. All right, are you? Fine, baby. Yeah, not for long, though. Not for long. Your troubles are going to just begun. 